Get your comments in on this week's show because we have a load mega bundle to give away. The Kickstarter is run at the minute and we have a deluxe pledge up for grabs. This includes the core game, the loading expansion, the Please Wait expansion, the Kickstarter exclusive expansion and all the free stretch goals. Get your comments in on Beast of War, Facebook or YouTube for your chance to win. Also, stay tuned later in the show because we have been sent over some beautifully painted miniatures from the core set. This episode is supported by Battlefilm.com. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of massed fantasy combat on BeastsOfWar.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekender. Good morning! I'm back. Another week has passed in gaming. We have had a heat wave. So I'm getting my big white pasty legs out to get them all <laughs> nice. Do you know what? I've really sickened Lloyd. Okay. Uh, all right. So Lloydie. What have you done? Lloydie, Lloydie, you know Lloydie has a thing about busy. Okay. He's busy. Lloydie. Lloydie. Bad busy. He's not a huggy kind of a guy or Lloydie, right? So. No, I have I've had hugs off Lloyd. Uh, you have? Yeah. They're lovely. Well, Okay. He doesn't like particularly like to be touched. He doesn't like flesh. He doesn't like anything like that there. So anyway, so you sit at his desk and I wandered in and I never wear sandals, but I bought myself a pair of sandals specifically because of the good weather. We, I, you know, I can see where this look, is going already. We are in the middle of our annual 24 hour heat wave. <laughs> so, no, no, it's so it's about two weeks now. But I, I sat down, I sat down beside him at his desk and I put my feet up on the desk with my toes hanging out. I just saw Lloydie in the chair going, oh. Oh, no, no, no. That, I, I would do that. That's not being scared of a There was all together too many toe hairs. On. Oh. Oh, no, no, that that would leave me cringing, Warren. So no, no, that's that's not a weird one. Fair play to you, Lloyd. Anyway, we we've had a, an amazing, amazing week because it's been sunny. Yes. Like yep. split the trees, sunny outside. Yep. And we've had the Caribbean inside yes because we, there was the guys from blood and plunder over from miami they brought the weather with they them brought week. the weather they, with they them. must have done but i'll tell you this i was talking to them apparently our good weather our summer weather here in ireland that's their winter yes yes <laughs> I, I i can totally imagine that i can totally imagine that yeah. but um we'll have more from the the firelock uh, games guys uh, a bit later in the show mm -hmm. and if you are a backstager Tune in tomorrow because uh, we've got a Firelock Games prize. We're going to be giving away yes. a nice, sexy prize uh, to one of the backstagers. We yep. also have a prize in this week's, uh, in this front stage show as well, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, so everybody knows that Reload or Load has went back to Kickstarter. It's now Reload. Yep. So we will be giving away <laughs> one of the pledge levels from the Kickstarter in this episode. So get your comments in on Base Four, YouTube, and Facebook for your chance to win. When we get there, I will tell you what's in the pledge. Is it a big pledge? It's the deluxe pledge. Oh, that sounds good to me. Okay, so when we get to that stage, you, you can find out, out more. Yeah, so you want to talk about hobby nights type? Yes, stuff? we've got some updates. Mm. Okay, uh, the first update is that the next hobby night live is tentatively mm -hmm. Thursday the 25th at 8 p.m. Okay. BST, British Summertime. Yes. Yep. Um, what we're going to be doing, I say tentatively, Providing nothing goes wrong, we're going to do <laughs> Hobby Night Live on Thursday the twenty fifth. It's yeah, starting like to get starting to get a bit condensed now because mm. the next week we have UK Games Expo. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, remember that on a on a week where there's a Hobby Night Live, mm. there it's a four hour stream, and hopefully we'll get the full four hours actually streamed this time. Yeah, in one block, in one go. Um, which means that um, for anybody that doesn't catch it on the Thursday. It's there instead of the weekender mm. um, on the Saturday and the Sunday. So it's still four yeah. hours uh, worth of content. You're still going to need two days to consume that if you don't yes. watch it live. Yeah, not to mention the fact that it gives you plenty of time to feed in your own hobby projects through the weekend to actually jump in with it. Yeah, uh, remember the Hobby Night Live is all about your projects, uh, not just ours. And it, we kick off a forum post, mm -hmm. okay? And in that forum topic, it, you know, you get stuck in with you, what you're doing. Uh, over the course of Hobby Night Live, and then over the course of the rest of the weekend. Some people still uh, continue on right through into the, the rest of the week to, to get it finished up. That's, that's entirely fine. Yeah. But what we do is we're going to be picking the Hobby God, okay, 
um, on the, the Monday or Tuesday following the Hobby Night Live. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have uh, all been well. We will have a brand new Beast of War Hobby God bag. That is the only way you can get it is by <laughs> winning it. Uh, in Hobby Night Live. This is what we've called it. We've decided to call it the Hobby God Bag. The Hobby God <laughs> Bag. Yeah, I think, uh, isn't there a... Oh, Caesar's been working on the actual... We, we have the Hobby part. God cartoon. Yeah. Okay. And it, it basically, it's like a big stone monolith that says Hobby God, and you have a little a little Justin and, and a little Warzan worshipping at the, the altar of the Hobby God. And the only way to get that, it's, it's entire, as limited edition as you could ever have because the only way you could ever win a hobby god bag mm. is through the participation in hobby night life that's pretty sweet it is kind of cool now so the hobby night live is not just about what we're working on it's about what you're working on in this upcoming hobby night live we'll probably do a little bit of um, a little bit of kind of weekendery stuff in there as well possibly we'll see but the, the main bulk of it is we're going to be we're going to be kicking off our next terrain project, mm -hmm. okay? Um, our last terrain project, which was the build of this, the beautiful Caribbean table. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, which we have some pictures of. We do. Oh, of course, of course. Okay. So, do you want to come back to that in a minute and we'll continue on with what you're, okay, well, what we're, the, what the, we're thinking about? The last terrain project uh, was uh, was the build of the, the mega pirate table. Yes. Okay. Um, the one that we're going to be kicking off on Hobby Night Live is uh, the Viking table. Mm. Which we've been kicking about quietly, quietly in the background yeah. here. The Viking table. Now, what we what we're, we're trying something we're trying something a bit different. Mm. So, Hobby Night Live is going to be about the kickoff of that project, mm. not about the finish of that project. Because what we're trying to do is we're going to try and get the community involved with this mm. as we plan out our schematics, do some experiments, mm -hmm. lay block stuff out. It start to, to make our first steps into it, looking specifically for ideas and feedback and stuff from you guys. So as a community, we come up with the, our initial kind of set of ideas over the course of Hobby Night Live. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we could never build a gaming table on one night in four hours. No. Because if, if you're not a backstager, you're missing out because we do have this vlog and we'll show some pictures and stuff. But the table we built <laughs> is a lot longer than four hours. What <laughs> we will then follow that up with is a series of programs uh, very uh, quite like what we did for the uh, for the Caribbean table, mm -hmm. uh, which will then plot the rest of the build, and they will go out as Hobby Lab basically. Yes. Uh, th this went out as vlog, but it was basically Hobby Lab, you know. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to be uh, the, technically the it should have been probably put out as Hobby Lab from, yeah. the, from the very get go because it was way beyond vlog. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not vlog; it is Hobby Lab. So, uh, but that's that's how we're that's how we're going to do it. Mm. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're making a, a few kind of like adjustments and tweaks as we settle into it, but mm. we're, we're aiming for, I don't know, the talk currently in here is that, you know, maybe around once a month or something like that, we try to, to get another, another build or another something. Mm -hmm. um, and we like the, we like the format that this, this table here took where it was five, six episodes or four, five, six episodes. Mm where we're able to show uh, a number of different techniques. And why I particularly liked it more so than Hobby Lab is that A, there's more to it, but B, you get to see everything in situ. Do you know what I mean? It, it, everything is purposeful because it's mm. all, all of the mini tutorials and stuff that are in it. Because like, you take this, this project here, right? As a backstager, yeah. you could come over to Beast of War now. Mm -hmm. Um, and watch the there's six episodes, three hours, yeah. okay, of content, and every okay. technique is covered in it. Let's bring the pictures up then. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. But the next table we're, we're looking at is sort of a Viking catacut. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back table. to that. Uh, we're going to talk about this. More. This yeah. one. Let's get the pictures. Right. So this is the this is the pirate cove. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what what we try to do with these builds is we're trying to do builds that realistically you could accomplish at home. Yes. Okay. It's a mix of buying stuff and making stuff. Because if you were to try and make everything, you would never get it done. Yeah. For instance, we have some foreground buildings here. Yep. yep. We've bought in the 
the trees. Mm -hmm. yep. We we have the ships. The ships come in from uh, the, the Firelock. ships are Firelock yeah. Games uh, ships. Yeah, and the little bits of stonework that was from the the Herstart. That's mold Herstart. That yeah. That's Herstart molds. And we we cover all of that. We have a few bits and pieces like the the um uh the decking, not the decking. What's the, the piers? The piers, the and piers stuff, the, yeah. Which we built in another project. We reused them, but we do have. The yeah, we, we have stuff, some, yeah, and then we we built rope bridges and 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 things like that. So, so what I really like about uh, about this format, Lloyd, is that there there's a nice mix of things of, of things that you buy in and you experiment with it and see what it, what else you can do to it to to improve on it. There's nothing that doesn't really get touched. Here's the thing, all, right? To theme it all into what you're doing. We have a show called Hobby Lab. Yeah. And in that show, we build things like maybe we'll build a water tower, mm -hmm. or maybe we build a palm tree, like do-it-yourself palm trees, yeah. or maybe we, maybe we'll build a set of fancy rocks or or barbed wire or something like that. It's all well and good seeing those things being done, but you come away going, "That was cool. I seen how that was done." Yeah. What, what, do, I what do I do with it? Yeah. What do I put it on a table? That's that's the point of this, and that's why I think that the format uh, for Hobby Lab is going to move more towards this because it allows us to. Uh, experiment with a pile of stuff, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, you have a functioning, fully functioning gaming table yeah. that, that can then be utilised, and everything has a reason then for 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 being there. And you know, there, there's some some techniques we might reuse. Most of the time, we're going to try and do different things and, and different mm -hmm. experiments. Some experiments work, some experiments don't work. Mm -hmm. But what what I'm what I'm really uh, interested in is a hobby night live. To kick off the whole project, to get community feedback and stuff like that at the start, mm. that we can try our best to uh, integrate into the the project, and then after that, I'm not sure if it'll be like the, the following week or, or or spread over a couple of weeks. We will then complete the build and film it, and then there'll be a there'll be a hobby lab mini series mm. where it actually then shows the table build. Seriously, if you're interested in seeing this and you're interested in supporting uh, this kind of show, yeah. uh, please do consider coming across and uh, joining Backstage because it's um, Backstage is the only thing that can that we can make a show like this uh, actually happen. Yeah. So we if you're if you're interested, come across, take the seven day free trial, and watch the three hours uh, six episodes yeah. mm -hmm. um, of the build of the Caribbean table. Yeah, um, uh, because you will you will really enjoy it. It, it, it was fascinating. I've loved. Watching this come together, mm. it's it, there's been no technique in this that has been too hard or too difficult. Well, well that's see, that's the thing. See, when I start projects like this, I try to keep it all within reach of most anybody. of us. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Although I will say, uh, the one thing of this project that I think we're going to see a lot and a lot of. So if you bring up our camera, is Lloyd's rock sponge technique. Yes, yeah. sponge rocks. They yeah. are the they this are the, is the, the future box. of gaming tables. Yeah. I'm going to well, think. Just we have, we have really a video really up on YouTube. If you just go back a couple of days, you'll see a video where we're showing off, mm -hmm. yeah. like a showcase of the table. But what we don't get across in that because the guys are getting ready to film on it, so I couldn't just run in and rip it all apart. Is the actual full modular nature of yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The whole and, thing and, is and designed the, to... and the funky materials that it's made from. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, so, you're putting stuff everywhere. You're covering me. <laughs> although we've, can we bring the picture of the the complete table up? Of course. Although we've built this look, this table layout, you can lift all sorts of parts and move them around. So instead of having one big sort of landmass on one side, yes, you, you can, could have a big central landmass yeah, in the middle, mm -hmm. or you can split it off into the corners because Justin's been filming with the guys and he took the cliff on that side and he put it on the instead of going long ways. Yeah, down the table, I put them put on either end edge. to give us a nice yeah. big bay. Right, and then he took that bit and moved it over here, and now it looks like a much larger area, but well, there's more sea and yeah. stuff. And then I was thinking, having looked at this, do you know, if we do a big six by four, mm -hmm. if I put flock in, yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got flock in, flock in, in my coffee. There's, right. a re there's a reason flock's coming off this. I yeah. took a little shortcut when because we, we were pressed for time to get it ready for the guys to film, so mm. I just sort of set the flock in, but you. Go ahead and glue it. Anyway, yeah. what was I saying? Oh, yes, I was looking at this table and going, actually, if we make a 6x4 mm -hmm. with the same uh, same flocky material as this, yes, like this, uh, okay, yeah. there's no reason these aren't already rock faces and stuff for a land battle. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. you know, absolutely. Throw a few of these down, mm -hmm. get your Kings of War minis out, clobber mm -hmm. the crap out of each other, and off you go. Yeah. It, it, I have, uh, Like I said, I have loved this project. Yeah. Uh, it has been great, and it was great seeing how... Uh, taking a, a slightly different approach to um, to the to the documenting 
of the project uh, worked so well. And there was a lot of really, really good feedback from backstagers. You, you seem to really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a blast with it as well. So much so, like I said, you know, we would love to be able to try and do one maybe maybe once a month or something like that. And ish, ish. ish. We, we'll see. Be, there's a lot of stuff goes on. You need to be flexible so, with it, but yeah. that's the sort of thing. But imagine, you know, these projects kicking off with a hobby night live mm. where we're getting involved and planning stuff out, taking in ideas and see, stuff like that. And then over the course of the rest of the month, then we, we then build it and then the episodes go out. Uh, see, there's the, the crux of it, which is something I don't think we've ever really shown too often is how we actually begin the planning stages of a table. That's uh, because how, we how, argue how, and fight, Justin. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> and now we're going to do that how, live. How many people <laughs> come to a project where they say, I want to build a gaming table? Well, I did do it in this vlog. Where do I start? Because I started it right at the raw materials mm -hmm. stage yeah. because I was saying even in the vlog, this bit mm. is actually interesting too because you can see how ideas develop. Yeah. Yes. Because one of, the big ta one of the big problems of tackling a big terrain project like mm. that is how do you go from nothing to what we were looking at. Yes. And a lot of people stumble at that point going, I don't know how to visualize that. Yes. Well, this is this is why I think Hobby Night Live could be a could be a great vehicle for us to explore that. Um, you know, because we can also talk about our, around minis and, and other bits and pieces. Mm. But obviously this next one we're having a go at is Vikings. We're going to do a Viking table, okay? It may end up being quite a large Viking table because we have a shit ton of Viking boats to fit on the Viking well, table. Well, it'll be six by 12. I was kind of hoping you would say something like that. Six by twelve. Oh my god, I'm so excited! All right, so can I can I suggest? Is it six by twelve or four by twelve? Four by twelve, I think. Sorry, four by twelve. Four by twelve. Sorry, okay. six by twelve. Forget yeah. that. So so four foot by twelve foot. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and recreate Kattegat or or something inspired by Kattegat. Now Kattegat is the is the village um, where uh, uh, Ragnar Lothbrok um, from the Vikings show. Um, ends up becoming Earl before he ends up becoming king. Yes. And Katagut uh, uh, is is a kind of like their home port, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like cliffs up this side and cliffs up that side. And then there's a big, badass Viking hall in it. And then there's mm -hmm. other uh, long houses and stuff. But most importantly, it is a port. Mm -hmm. And there are scenes where there are dozens of Viking ships See, the, the in, in the bay. Is you've also got a, a transitional step on it where it's still in the town, then you go to forest and then the mountains. Yeah. So well, how you bring that into a gaming table will be interesting. That's as well. what we're gonna that's what we're gonna find out during Hobby Night Live. Mm. And we're gonna but we're gonna talk about the materials that we use and mm. talk about uh, all all sorts of stuff. But I'm quite excited by it. And then we'll uh, you know we've done deep hot Caribbean mm -hmm. um at the moment <laughs> <laughs> Oops! <laughs> you know we get. If we get I, I really of, have learned to do this. We get a few more palm trees on this and get the only on the hottest summers and get some. Oh, get some, some like, predator going on this. Anyway, oh. I've said we, we've done. We, we've all we've all took turns at doing the deep hot Caribbean. Mm. Now we we I think we'll maybe go dead of winter mm. um, on Kattegat and actually really go to go to town because we have we have uh, another table that we want to show you guys where it's been kind of like frost and stuff like that i think i'd like to go another step even further so you're like, you're like and, going to like deep snow maybe full-on winter if, i don't know i don't know if, i want to think it through if you're watching the war machine video went out this week you'll see it yes mm. if, if you if you have checked out the war machine uh, playthrough we we have that table and there will be vlog or no not vlog there will be hobby lab Going out um, about that, about the build of that table and the techniques that we use to to put that table well, together. I will say that is one of the funnest tables I've ever played on that one. Anyway, that that's Hobby Night Live. Remember, we're slabbering on about the project we're going to be doing. But remember, Hobby Night Live is all about your project, and um, we we want it, we want your live interaction with us. It's the whole point of it. Hobby Night Live is effectively like the Weekender. But it's not at the weekend. <laughs> and you can and actually interact with us. You can interact live with us. And that, that's the whole purpose of it, is that we, we can all get together, banter. We cross a few time zones. Yep. Unfortunately, most of them in the middle of the an Atlantic. But <laughs> you know, we, we do cross some time zones to try and reach you guys in the States. And you, know, you, know, you, can, uh, you can get involved via the chat, mm -hmm. um, via Twitter. I want more of you involved via Twitter, because I'm really enjoying getting the tweets and, and mm -hmm. things like that there. And it's just great having it during the show. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we might we might hit Ben up for 
um, a little bit of news or, or, or something like that there. You know, just to, just to give way. you a little bit of hobby night or of weekend or fix, mm. should it be there. But it may, we may or may not do that. We'll, mm. we'll, we'll wait and see. The, the main thing is to try and get a show out without the, without the whole thing crashing on us. So we're, <laughs> we're taking steps to try and have a more stable show. But if we're planning it and we all start fighting with each other, it might be amazing. It could be great. You know, it, it's, <laughs> this is like that's why, man. It's it's be be our industry's American chopper, basically. Oh, we're going to start throwing doors at each other. I, I'm calling not it on Mikey. <laughs> right. You can't call hear? not it on Mikey, Justin. <laughs> Do you want... Do you want to hear what some of the stuff that's happening right now at this moment that you guys will be interested in? Mm. Um, uh, well, there's two uh, there's two big events on this weekend. Um, first off is the World of Darkness Berlin event. Okay, we're we're having we're having a bit of a chuckle in, at this one because this could be quite interesting. We it's a it's a big event of RPGs. Um, and it's all about. There's like a LARPing thing going on too. Yeah, yeah it's a LARP, but it's a whole yeah. kind of, yeah. it's a whole kind of like gothic horror vampire kind of thing, isn't mm. it, Ben? Yeah. So um, the whole thing behind World of Darkness is it's set in within a world that's full of vampires and werewolves and things like that. It's a very dark horror-based um, RPG system, but it's got a really loyal fan base that are very much into the LARPing side of it as well. So it's going to be very interesting seeing uh, what Chris, so you know him from uh, Darker Days Radio, we talked about it last week on the Weekender as well. He's going to be bringing us some images and some cool story stuff from the event. Because obviously, as I said before, it's got you know the proper role-playing side of it. There's the LARPing, and there's also a bit of card gaming in there as well at the same time. So it'll be fun to see what this was like, because it's very, very different for uh, Beast of War. So. Yeah, it's a little bit sexy. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit sexy. It's we've, a mature we, game. We've had meetings before this went out saying, you know, dude, um, yeah, we got some pictures from the previous year. <laughs> it's a little bit sexy, okay? It's, a, it's hard not to be sensual when... When, when you're a vampire. When yeah. They're, yeah. Whenever they're, and there's, there's an maybe, maybe a couple of ladies... I didn't see, I didn't, there, there might be men doing it as well, but there's a couple of ladies and one sucking the neck of the other one and stuff like that. So, so it is, it is quite a sensual thing. It's a mature game. We, so just beware. Just you're, beware. You're, you're saying that now, and now the weekend's going to happen. It's just going to be pictures of people with cards at a table. Well, this is, it. well, we <laughs> did, and, and like, we did what say, was Warren talking about? we did say to the guys that were covering it, dudes, just, just be careful, right? Because, you know, we've got lots of people coming through. Yeah. Um, it, it, just be careful with what you post. Mm. So if the entire blog ends up empty, <laughs> you'll know that it was a really good weekend. Like, I mean, a really, really good weekend. You don't so have... hang, hang. The, the first rule of World of Darkness Berlin is we don't talk about World of Darkness Berlin. Oh, <laughs> they don't... don't have time to talk. They're too busy sucking. But yeah. you don't it's have a... to be a sexy vampire. No. There's no, a movie no. on Netflix called In the Shadows or something like that. Uh -huh. Oh, What We Absolutely Do in the Shadows. Amazing. Absolutely What's it amazing. called? What we do in the shadows. What we do in the shadows. It is it's hilarious. Like, like a load of vampires are all housemates who live together. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's just so weird. When you're a vampire, you become very sexy. I've got to say, it it looks like an absolute blast. And they look like everybody looks like they all know each other really well. <laughs> it is, it is, it is interesting. It is. Interesting. This is one of those things. The World of Darkness RPG looks like one of those systems that you can go all the way with it. You know, you can go absolutely nuts, drop straight in as much as you want, and take it really, really seriously. You go all the way in the nuts. You go, you go oh, really, okay, really right, seriously. Right, that's great. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, Everybody's furiously clicking on the World of Darkness, posting, post the sexy stuff, Chris, post the sexy stuff. <laughs> anyway. And there'll be none, and then we'll have to rush in at the weekend and start biting each other's neck. <laughs> no! <laughs> God, there's no biting. Come on, Justin. Arrgh. Right. I think I need hazard pay. The other huge <laughs> event that we have on this weekend, we have Don and Gianna at the Cool Mini or Not Expo, the mm. Simon Expo, um, where it's taking place in Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, this weekend. We will see if there's any Walking Dead. Uh, running around. Mm -hmm. That was Atlanta, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Atlanta. I'm not going mad, am I? No, that was Atlanta. Now, you see, what you're really wanting to look out for this weekend at the Simon Expo is the brood kitten redone. This yes. is going to be a big reveal for those guys showing off what they're doing with one of the oldest factions that they're revisiting to bring up to date. So uh, that has me really, really excited. Yes. We had an interview, actually, out about that. So yes. let's, get, let's get a... Let's get a link in here yeah, to yeah. take it. So where the guys are talking uh, about what yeah, uh, what's Brian happened. was showing off some of the new renders. Oh, they look so good. There's also going to be all the board games and stuff are going to be there, mm -hmm. and there's bound to be stuff 
based on the the Game of Thrones uh, game of the Song of Ice and Fire oh, yes. game. So it's like <laughs> yes, I want to see more of that for sure. So. Yeah. Um, uh, Big stuff going on this weekend. Stay tuned to the live blogs, um, uh, so you can you can get your your fill of board games and sexy vampirism. <laughs> That's what so, you're after. Um, on the subject of events, we're yeah. fast approaching UK Games Expo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When is that? It's coming up real it, soon. It's the very not, start of next month. It's the very yeah the very start of next month. Second we'll, to the fourth of June. Yeah, yeah, we'll be packing up. Uh, we'll be packing up to travel on the Wednesday mm -hmm. uh, to head over to that. Um, uh, some other some updates to keep you guys aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, one is um, if you fancy if you fancy a kind of like a meetup, a Beast of War meetup, um, we might do a meetup in the Hilton. Yep. Uh, there's a, a Hilton hotel on the, the actual site. So we could maybe find one of the bars or something in, in uh, Hilton and do a bar. Uh, I've actually been to this, to this Hilton. Uh, there's actually a really nice bar in the Hilton itself. You've been to this Hilton? I've been to this Hilton. This is where they held smoke on. All right, okay. So I, uh, don't worry, I know where we're going. I've got to sort it. Okay. So they have a really nice bar in the actual Hilton itself. Mm -hmm. But just out around the way from it, there's a really nice big complex place that does tons and tons of different types of food. So we maybe get everyone out for a meal. Right. Let's pick somewhere. Yeah. Okay. How about Nando's? Um, I can't think I can, of anything more Nando's. complicated no, no. than tons of his descending. No, 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 no. I don't, don't want to eat. Okay. Want to drink. Okay, okay. okay In so, the help. You see, so, <laughs> food, complicated, drink, simple. Drink, simple. Yeah, so. Uh, okay. You'll, you'll, You'll be happy to know that obviously there's the bar inside the Hilton, which is great, so you can go and get drunk there. But there's also they're going to be doing actual proper street food outside, like they do every year. Mm. So you can actually go outside and grab some food if you want to, and then come back in and do some more drinking. So it's uh, you know it's all fine. <laughs> right. Basically, See, we're, we're, we're going to pick a place and we're going to have a beast of war uh, meetup. Mm. Whether you're a backstager, whether you're not a backstager, it don't matter. We're going to yeah. spread the love around. Okay. So on the Thursday night. I think the Thursday night's probably the best bet, isn't it? Yeah, that gives us a little bit of recovery time. Recovery what time, time does the show start on the Friday, Ben? <laughs> uh, it starts early in the morning, I think. So I think it's around sort of nine o'clock in the morning. Oh god, uh, we'll that's be... when I had to get there last time. But, yeah, so but remember, we'll it's be a, starting about six a.m. Then it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the show. Yes, yes. I thought it was a four-day show. Uh, no, we're going, to, we're going to be there for four days, uh, prepping and oh, stuff okay. like that there. So yeah. we still have three days. Yes. yes. It's not a pressure cooker as much as... Well, salute. I say that, no. It's not yeah. as pressure cooker as Salute. You say that, it's maybe about five <laughs> times the size of Salute. So yeah. it's, um, we, 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 we need to pace ourselves. Couldn't yeah. just go in and go Salute. No, no, no th this yeah. is marathon style. Yeah. This is going to be a completely different type of live blogging. Uh, I don't think we can do it though, and we'll not meet up with you guys, and and, no. and we'll, we'll get together for. I mean, like few, I, I know whenever we went to salute, we didn't head out. Mm -hmm. uh, now I deliberately did that because I wanted to make sure that we were all bright eyed and bushy tailed for the show. Yeah. I didn't want us to be it, turning up the next one. day dead. It's a tough one. Anyway, two big announcements for everybody to be aware of, other than the the Beast of War drink up, is Ian Livingstone of the Fighting Fantasy fame and yeah. uh, one of the original. Dudes behind Games Workshop. Mm -hmm. This this guy here with all his all his board games behind him. Wow, that's a nice collection. He's going to be hosting a seminar and doing signings throughout the yep. event. Yep. And also, there's been an update on the Games Workshop seminar where they're going to be talking about Eighth uh, Edition 40K. It's now on the Friday, the second of June at 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. According to this, okay, at in midnight. the Hilton. No, no, 12 p.m. Midnight oh, midday. is 12 a.m. Sorry. Okay, so 12 p.m. at midday mm. um, in the pavilion room. So it was previously, it said it was going to be on the Sunday. It's now on the Friday midday mm. um, at the, the Hilton Hotel pavilion room. 1,200 hours. 1,200 hours. I do everything in 24 hours. It's just easy. That, that just makes more sense. <laughs> right. If it's 0, 100, I know it's midnight. Uh, final final update. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Midnight. The final update is um, or remember that we have on a community terrain challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Shades of Spring. Now, if you go to the final post on this one for me, Justin, first, uh, okay? This one? Nope. This one? That one. Bingo. Okay. okay. So if you go into hey, that, so this is our terrain makers challenge, okay? Um, uh, in this one, we have uh, some. Categories, okay. Uh -huh. uh, I'll come back to the form tag. So the categories are um, the best idea. So the idea is you make a piece of terrain, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and we want everybody to be involved. It doesn't matter if you've made terrain or never made terrain. 
and this is your chance to start sticking some stuff together and make a, a nice piece of scenery. But our our categories are we have the best idea. So mm -hmm. it's it doesn't matter how well or how poorly executed what you have uh, what you've come up with was. Mm -hmm. um, we we rate it based on how cool the idea was. Mm -hmm. We then our second category is we have best executed. So it doesn't matter how original the idea is. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all about the execution of mm -hmm. the idea. We then have best. So how technically good it is? Yes, how it? technically good your execution was. How mm. good the end result mm -hmm. basically was. Yeah. So that basically, for, for any of us that um, are not mad skilled train makers yet, we can come up with cool ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, it was previously won by uh, a chap who had uh, made beautiful sci-fi train out of water pistols. Like, I mean, it mm. blew us away. Okay? Interesting. Um, we then, a third category is the bre the best project log on the forums. Mm. So what we encourage you to do is you start, um, if you go back to that picture there for me, you start a forum topic uh -huh. and you, you, you tag that forum topic with Shades of Spring. Mm. I'll come to explain what Shades of Spring means in a minute. Um, and then in there, we want you to um, basically document um, what you're doing. You can document that with pictures and text if you want to do little video clips and you can embed them via YouTube, feel free to do it. But the idea is to document it the, that um, you can show people what you're doing. The best ones also show people how to do what you're doing so mm. that they could follow along and, and try it themselves. And uh, that is our third category, um, is the, the best project log in the forums. Did and then our fourth category yeah. is if you have a youngster or know of a youngster, mm -hmm. um, get them involved, get them building something, anything, because we have a category for junior beasts. Mm -hmm. So uh, just let us know in the forum that it's a junior beast that, that's involved in it, mm -hmm. and then uh, the young'uns uh, get a chance to have a little category all of their own, because you know terrain, and, uh, terrain making is something that they can do at all ages. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And you know we just love to, uh, to encourage... Getting in, getting stuck in and building stuff for your gaming tables. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be small. It can be anything you want. Mm. We theme these competitions, okay? Yeah. And Shades of Spring, um, uh, the closing date for it is the twenty first of June. So you still have uh, a, lo a a fair amount of time. Like it doesn't it doesn't finish until the summer. So mm -hmm. the, the the solstice, June twenty first. Yeah. So June twenty first is when it finishes, and um, Shades of Spring. Th we're saying it can be anything. You can make absolutely anything, but it has to have a touch of the spring about it. So can I make a tree? You could. You could if you wanted to be Does obvious. Does it have to be budding though, or can it be a? Full it tree? has to be a touch of. Springtime. When we were saying springtime, it's about new life. Okay. So it's about, you know, we, we have all these battlefields and things like that there that are just totally war-torn and stuff like that. Some of the things, ever since that, the, <laughs> that time we were playing Gears of War, yeah. right, and we were running through the streets... Um, and it was all torn and, and decimated and really run down. And everything was those sepia kind of colours. Mm. And then we ran out into that square, do you remember? And there was this beautiful blossom tree. So is that blossom tree's kind then? That is what we're saying. <laughs> you can create anything you want, mm. but it's just a touch of new life about it. So a touch that, of, it's that turn uh, of the year where uh, life's coming back to the world. Yeah, a touch of... It seems like life is coming back to it, or a touch of spring. It could, it could be some uh, flowers or something. It could be buds. It could be anything. And the whole idea is for you guys to to come up with it, with ideas on this. So could it you be, can make anything you want at any scale you want for any game you want. I'm totally going to enter this. And it's just about uh, a we slight can touch of screen. <laughs> well, maybe we can build something in on Hobby Night Live into the. I don't know. Table. I'm going to make a giant plinth. With a blade of grass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You see, what you do is you have an orc holding an, a space marine helmet upside down with just a pot of plant growing. Is out he of taking that to a whole new level there? Yeah, I think you both should enter it. Egypt, right? Yeah. That, that's 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 my update. Do you want to take a break and then we'll let him talk to the guys at Firelock Games? Yeah, absolutely. All right, right. We'll be right back after we tell you about some hubs. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Twisted aliens and demented cultists battle across the devastating science fiction world of Dark Age. Muster your forces and learn to survive at BeastsOfWar.com. 
So, hi everybody, I've been joined by the guys from Firelock Games. Say hello to John and Mike. Guys, guys, welcome to the show. Hello, thank it's you, Justin. Pleasure to have you over. <laughs> uh, I've been spending the week with these guys, dropping headfirst into Blood and Plunder, but we all know you guys had your Kickstarter. That's You're, right. Have you fulfilled or are you getting close to fulfillment now? We have fulfilled. We finished fulfilling. We sent everything out at the end of January. That was the last bit of shipping we did. It took a while to get it over to you know overseas, but it's all done now, so we're moving on to the next thing. Okay, so now you're looking towards getting it to retail, getting into shops. That's right. We just started taking orders for that, so you'll start seeing it showing up in shops pretty soon. Okay, let's have a chat about the future, because now the game, it's out there, it is living, it is breathing. Mm -hmm. Where does the world go from here? That's the big question in everybody's mind. All right, so we've got a couple big things coming forward. One's not so big, one's just... We're releasing some new units that there'll be a PDF out soon for. Mm -hmm. um, mainly, it's just reusing the models that we already have and mm -hmm. using them in kind of different flavors since they would have looked the same anyway. Yeah. Um, some of the units that you'll see, we did some videos with um, things like Spanish Corsairs, English Pirate Hunters, things mm -hmm. of that nature. And then um, there's also a card deck coming out with all the units, all those new units and all the options coming out. Mm -hmm. So that'll be out for sale hopefully sometime in June. Okay. So um, going forward, though, the bigger, the bigger news is that we've mm -hmm. got... A new Kickstarter coming. Hey. All right. Uh, well, I've, I've loaded up some stuff on the website for us to actually cycle through and see what's coming. So you're getting a bit of a sneak peek here today, guys. It's what's going to be coming in the future of Blood and Plunder. So uh, let's bring this up here. And if you want to actually start cycling through for us, Mike. All right. So we can start right here. Here we have the brave Dutch commander, spyglass in hand, hanger hanging by his side. Mm-hmm. And he will be, that's the generic leader for the new Dutch hmm. uh, nationality, which will have a couple factions at least, probably maybe more than likely three mm -hmm. as we work toward it. We're trying to get as many as we can out of them. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely look for the, the Dutch military units. You can look for privateers and you can look for militia. Ooh, lovely. All right, well, if you want to cycle on through the post here. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm giving up control of uh, <laughs> the website to him, so let's see how this goes. So scroll down. Oh, this way, okay. Yeah. Ooh, right, hello. So here's another thing we've got is we've got some mountain units. So Ooh. this is basically going to be militia cavalry. Mm -hmm. These are for these are for any of the any of the nationalities aside from the Native Americans. We'll be including in this as well as we'll see in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, well, if you want to keep cycling through, I assume you have more poses for them. Sure, sure. Let's see. Can I just yeah. click through there like that? All right. Yeah. All right. So then Ooh, we got some more nice poses. poses. So they've all got um, they've all got horses clearly. Mm -hmm. And they've got braces of pistols. Mm -hmm. and they've got carbines. So they're pretty, they're loaded for bear. Mm. So. Now, the, the carbines, they're mm -hmm. a more modern sort of a weapon for this era, yeah? Um, so the carbines are basically just smaller muskets, essentially. Ah, okay. So you know how when we played, the muskets will have a range of 24 inches. Mm. Um, so they, they don't have that rule. So basically, if you need a natural 11, the carbines are going to be out of range, kind of like right. a pistol, but they don't have the penalties of a pistol. Okay, so you're right well, in between a pistol and a musket. Well, I mean, like, uh, we, we have been filming a pile of stuff to actually get you guys into the game, so you'll mm -hmm. figure that out once we start sending those videos out. Okay, right. let's, uh, let's keep cycling through here. What else do we have? All right, so let's see. Oops, keep wanting to go the wrong way. <laughs> so here we go. Here we've got some other Dutch units that are pretty interesting. Ooh. This is a Dutch boarding party. Mm-hmm. So we've got a Dutch name for them. I'm not going to try to pronounce it now. I haven't messed with it too much. But all you need to know is that this is the Dutch boarding party. Mm -hmm. So these guys are pretty warm as well. As you can see, this guy, for those who are familiar with the game, you can tell there is a brace of pistols here. Mm -hmm. Right? So they all carry a brace of pistols. That's a blunderbuss. Yes. So we've also got some guys with some heavier weapons. Like there's a guy with a blunderbuss. Uh -huh. There's also going to be a guy in this unit with even more pistols. Of course. And then, of course... What boarding party is complete without some grenadoes or explosives? <laughs> so he's got a little axe there so he can chop some holes through your deck and drop some grenades down if you're trying mm -hmm. to hide. All right. Well, there's, there's one thing I've always said. Nothing quite says I love you like high explosives. That's right. <laughs> All right, so now here we have your standard fare Dutch sailors. Mm. So Pistols and a dagger. Pistols and, and melee weapons of various types, such mm. as daggers and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. I like the design of these guys. Thank you, guys. Our sculptor did a great job, as well as our mm. concept artist, who came up with all the images for these. Mm. Well, I mean, like, the, the faces have a really great character to them. Every guy looks really individual, like an actual guy. Yeah. So that'll be Brian Runlet and Ian Hosfeld, uh -huh. the designers for that. Very, very nice. So that brings us over here to the natives, the Native Americans. So 
We've now, is this Native Americans or Native Caribbeans? So these are Native Americans, but these models in particular are, are Native Caribbeans. Mm. So here we've got their generic commander armed with his war club. Mm. So it's going to be a big heavy weapon. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, uh, so far we've got sculpted up a unit of archers. Mm. So we've got some bowmen for these guys here. Mm. Now, anybody who likes painting their flesh tones and stuff, this is going to be a great set to actually work with. Oh, yeah. And I will say, it's really nice to see you guys sculpting figures where it's, it's not this guy that's 10 foot tall, built like hell, you know, <laughs> looks as if he could lift a ship and throw it at you. <laughs> yeah, so this is the first unit. The other one's being sculpted probably as we speak, mm. and that's going to be uh, the natives with muskets. Mm. So they're going to have some muskets on there. They're absolutely lovely. And then finally... The, the one of the last previews we have mm -hmm. is this is Piet Hein. Piet so Hein. Piet Hein was a he was a Dutch privateer and admiral, mm -hmm. and he was the last person to successfully capture a, a significant portion of the Spanish treasure fleet, the flota, ah. that would go from that would go from the New World over to Spain mm -hmm. to deliver all the money. So all the money that he was able to take from the Spanish ended up being able to fund the Dutch army. Mm. Uh, for about eight months. Really? Yep. <laughs> wow. He must have got a fair bit of gold off those ships. Oh, yeah. Well, now, would it have just been gold, or were there other valuables being exported out? It would have been a number of things. Primarily silver, actually. It was the plate, silver plate fleet, so it would have been mm. mainly silver that he would All that right. he got. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, th this is the thing. You think, mm -hmm. you know, pirates, that era... I don't imagine them going after silver. In the movies, it's always a big chest of gold. <laughs> So it yeah. would have been more silver than anything else then. Lots of silver. Silver ingots was the, the big thing. Mm. So you had the uh, you had the mines in South America. That that's primarily what they produced. There was there was some gold too, but mm. silver was more. As far as I as far as I know, silver was much more plentiful. Cool. Than Very else. cool. Yeah. Well, it's it's nice to see that there the faction is instantly getting some characters in there. Yeah, there there will be another one as well that we will reveal soon. Ooh, we'll so. have to keep uh, an eye out for that. And then of course. Hello. Then, of course, we've got... That's a big ship. Our galleon. Yeah, so this is going to be the, four, the first ship with four deck sections in it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's going, to be some, there's going to be some new rules for this to play it in bigger games, to play it in smaller games as well. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be quite the, quite the beast. It, but it's it a great like... target for Piet Hein to capture, <laughs> full of, full of uh, silver plate inside. And don't forget, <laughs> that's the only one that can actually... Hold our heavy cannons right now. That's true. Oh, it's right. the only ship that'll carry heavy cannons. I see. Well, I mean, like, I'm seeing a ton of cannons along the side here, guys. If you look yeah. at the, the lower decks there, there's just a whole rake of them down along the bottom yeah. there. It's got 28 guns total. God damn. This thing must be a nightmare to reload. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's gonna be pretty not crazy. if you've got enough crew. <laughs> I suppose, and you've got enough deck space for them. Yeah. See, this is, this is one of the things I was wondering about, because mm -hmm. I look at the ships that you guys do, and you keep the deck space very, very open. Right. You know, I'm assuming that's just to get as many miniatures on there as you can. Exactly, yes. And normally, whenever they're in action, they'd clear the decks as much as possible. We mm. put some barrels and stuff in there for, you yeah. know, good measure. But a little flavor. Yeah. It doesn't look like they're in combat right now, so it's okay to have some stuff on deck. All right, well, uh, I will say the guys actually did bring this monster over with them. So uh, I'm going to put some stuff out of the way here, and I'm going to see if I can grab this thing. So I'll put that up there. All right, bring it on over. Oh, oh God, it's uh, heavy. I want to emphasize... It is heavy. I want to emphasize that it's a prototype and that I painted it, and that's why it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not as nice as it can be. But it's still impressive. We just mainly want to show you the size. Oh, let's see if I can bring this up here. All right, let's see. Oh my god, it's huge. Uh, well, there, <laughs> there's my hands. So, I mean, like, you can instantly see this thing has a massive scale. And this is... Okay, this was what was essentially the middle ship at the minute. Yeah, the Brigantine. Right. So, if we compare the size, mm -hmm. this thing is just ridiculously big <laughs> if I don't knock cannons everywhere. Right. So, another thing, another game thing that, that's significant with this mm. is that because of the height difference, mm. you guys are going to have to actually take climb actions to charge over the sides. <laughs> so you got to literally climb up the side of the ship to be able to, to board it. So, well, unless both you and your man have a galleon apiece. Oh, then that, that's true, <laughs> yes. If you all have galleons, then, you know, that's a different story. Oh, uh, and okay, I'm going to ask this. This is possibly a silly question, but what is this big monster made out of? So right now, it's made out of resin. Mm -hmm. um, this is, the prototype was made in resin. Now, we are experimenting with some different things mm -hmm. to see if maybe we can find the more, uh, a more affordable alternative to get it as, uh, into as many hands as yeah. possible. Well, this is, this is quite the lump. Yeah. I will say that it is really, really heavy. 
but it's it's really nice. I mean, like for a prototype, I know you're going to still be doing work on it, so I'm guessing details up around the side are going to be worked on. Right. You know, I, I heard mm -hmm. you guys mentioning something about different figureheads. Right. Well, in the back here, in the oh, back of the I ship, see. right now it's just blank. Ah. Uh, so well, let me see if I can turn this over, but I can see. Sure. So, so the stern is the most unfinished part of it, aside yeah, from so the, here? aside from the planking being, I mean, the wood grain being missing, right? So back there, there's going to be some different parts you're going to be able to add to give it different flavor. So saints for the Spanish or the French. I see. And some lions for the uh, English or Dutch. I see. Things of that nature. It is lovely. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, like trying to get this thing through customs must have been fun. <laughs> I don't think they stopped us. We put it under the plane, so. How oh, right? So that went apparently into... they don't even look at anything under there. Well, yeah, <laughs> it it really depends what you're carrying. Yeah, I guess if they see a resin ship, then <laughs> we're just well, glad they didn't cut it open and search it for drugs. Well, th this this is the <laughs> thing. I've heard horror stories of guys who've went through with studio painted models, mm. and you know, like the the customs have turned to them and said, "Excuse me, sir, is that hollow?" Um, yeah, it's resin. Um, I'm sorry, sir, we're going to need to open that up. What? Oh. And they've literally broken down big, beautifully painted miniatures. That's, oh, that's horrible. Oh, no. Uh, Should but, be laws against things like that. I, just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. As soon as you get into that airport, you're in their world. That's true. All right, so I will pop this back out of the way because mm -hmm. how many ship designs are you guys planning to do? Because I'm assuming it's not just the big boy here. We've got at least one more. At least one more. And we're going in the opposite direction. We're going with that one more. It's going to be much, much smaller. Ah, I see. So that is going to be a, uh, a piragua, which is a basically it's a large dugout canoe. Ah, I see. So, but it was big enough. That they were some of them were like some of them were up to forty feet long. Wow! And uh, carried a lot of guys, and they were very very frequently used by the buccaneers. They some of these buccaneers would just use those and fire their muskets to pin down cannon crews and board and take galleons from them. So <laughs> they were pretty. They were so they were pretty practical craft, I guess. Mm. You see, this is one thing I think everybody should be watching out for whenever we're doing our gameplay videos and stuff because mm -hmm. not only can you fight on land in this game, mm -hmm. you can fight on sea. You can fight ship to ship. You can also fight ship to land, so it's it's a really really full system. So you can do everything that you would imagine yourself being able to do. So mm -hmm. ships like this aren't just set dressing; they actually become full fledged parts of the game, which yep. is really Absolutely. really interesting. Yep. Oh, honestly, I can't wait for everybody to start laying their hands on this game and getting playing it because I've had <laughs> such fun with it this week. Glad you've enjoyed it. Well, it's it's one of those things. Uh, I always find that whenever I come to a new game, there's always that little bit of me looking at it, going. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but as soon as you actually get in and start playing, you get into the world, you get into those main mechanics, get the bones of the game ready, and then just build on it. So mm -hmm. I'm really hoping people will actually give this game a look, because it's, it's definitely one of those historical eras that you can mm -hmm. have so much fun with, definitely. especially with all the characters from that era. Yeah, and don't be intimidated to pick it up either, because as you said, most people see it, and it is, even things like the ship's rigging, all these things, it's all of its very practical needs. We've made it as accessible as possible, and everything is easy to just pick up and go with. Yep. So. Well, guys, thank you very much for coming in to show everything off. I think we've covered everything, yes? Yeah, I think so. All right, well, uh, guys, I tell you what, get us your comments in below. Uh, and, well, let us know, are you excited about playing historical pirate games? Are you going to be going for the French, the Spanish, the English? Now, I'm saying English because it wouldn't have been British back then, I don't think. <laughs> or will you be going for something like uh, just the regular privateers become pirates of some form? <laughs> okay, guys, uh, thank you for coming in. Get your comments in. We will see you again. A world of hideous nightmares awaits in Kingdom Death Monster. Fight to survive or fade into darkness at the Kingdom Death Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Greek mythology rages to life in Mythic Battles Pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at BeastsOfWar.com. Awesome stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing that Kickstarter. Bloody. The ship. I got. I got. <laughs> yeah, the ship is amazing, right? <laughs> but, but but take it. Let's take a step back, right? So Justin has been uh, filming with the guys um, yeah. all this week. Yeah, I've really really enjoyed it. So uh, well, I'm looking forward to a uh, a blood and plunder uh, themed week, mm -hmm. and then an, an ongoing mini series exploring the game mm. uh, more m in more depth. Yes, I was fortunate enough to get to spend some time with Justin off camera. Where we were going through our first demo games together to get a to get a feel for for how the game works, and I've got to say, uh, this this game, it it just has captured the feel of of pirate to me. You know, it's um, 
So the, there's a lot to the game, okay? The core mechanics of the game um, are very, very simple and very straightforward. There's a beautiful activation um, mechanic where uh, it's based on a deck of cards. Um, I'm, I've been watching Black well, Sails recently. Yeah. To, to give myself a, a vibe. I'm really I'll, I'll talk more about it in backstage, but I'm getting I'm really getting into the well, whole if it's dark got, age period. If it's and, got an interest in activation system, yeah. it's already starting to win because we mm. spent a little bit of time last week, I think it was in the backstage show. Talking about talking activation. About for activation. Saga. Well let me explain this one to you. So um I have a deck of cards, you have a deck of cards. Yeah, well I, I, I'm getting into the historical periods more and more. Okay. So whenever I learned about the, the uh, tried this activation system, which was based on uh, on a deck of cards, okay, it's a customized deck of cards um, with one deck each. Mm -hmm. But it's a customized deck of cards, but it's still based on your normal deck of cards with the suits of uh, clubs, hearts, diamonds, uh, spades, mm -hmm. etc. But um, after trying it, um, I, I went home later that night. And I was researching, did pirates actually play with cards? And yes, they did. And this is what I mean. The theme of the game, everything just, it just feels piratey. It's got a lovely, lovely feel to it. But let's talk about this, um, this activation mechanic. So what happens is, I have a deck of cards, he has a deck of cards, you shuffle them, okay? Yeah. And then I draw uh, draw four cards. No, no, it's one per unit. So bigger games, you will draw more cards. Okay, we were we were playing with them. Um, we four were playing piece. with the four four side. But yeah. you, you draw basically a card per unit. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, yeah. And then that becomes your hand. Okay. And then based on the suit, and then based on the number of the suit, um, it determines whether you go first or second in the activation. So it goes unit by unit. But you can bid, basically. You can spend your high card, um, which uh, spades go before diamonds, no, which no, no. go before hearts, no, 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 which no. go before clubs. You got it wrong. Spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. All right, sorry. Spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. There you go. Okay. So if I draw a spade and he draws a spade, then it goes to the number of the spade. Okay. So uh, if I have a 13... Then <laughs> Ben's laughing. Are you, are, you having, are you having a river? A spade moment? is a spade. A spade is a spade, but yeah. but it goes to the number. So if I have a thirteen, a thirteen beats a, beats a six. Yeah. Okay. So the the but the 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 other thing to to remember about this is the spade cards have less activations. So there's less that you can do with the unit that you stand up then spending that card on. Unless you're a veteran. Um, yes. So there's uh, inexperienced, trained, and veteran. And you'll often find on a spade inexperienced have they can do one action, maybe a veteran might be able to do two. Mm. But if you spend a club, right, bearing in mind you will probably maybe be beaten um, by your opponent, is you'll go after him, but the club will often allow you to do more activations. You see, I was chatting really. with them to them about this, and it was kind of, he was trying to boil it down into really simple for me. He was yeah. going, okay, so if I play the spade... I go first, so I'm I'm reacting faster. Yes, but I'm reacting with, with less, less purpose. Time. Yes, because I'm going fast. Yes, less time Whereas to think. You're coming in after me, like Dustin says. You've thought more, mm -hmm. so you get to do more actions to represent that you took your time to think what I'm going to do. Yeah, but it there is. are nice ways to jig that as well with your commanders. Yes, yes, it's wonderfully tactical. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you're not you're not playing. The same. You're not playing the same drudgy maneuvers every time. Okay. The other thing is, there's a lot less of the randomness in it because of the way you're playing the cards. You know, whenever yeah. you're, you, we love the the hand in the bag mechanic where you're drawing out a random die, mm -hmm. but it's a random thing. This is so much more tactical because you have so much more control with what's in your hand and deciding what to spend. Yeah, you have control, but you also have that sense of. Um, n not complete control mm. the, 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 o over a battle. So you have that sense of you, the typical uh, vibe that I uh, that I was feeling. And for me, games are often come down to how I feel. Mm. And I would be I'd be there going. I desperately need this unit to do something. I have to weigh up. Do I need it to go first? In which case it can do less. So what would I have it do? Would I just have it lay down fire? Or would I just have it move out of the way? Or do I risk that unit being killed and go go uh, go slower? Now I might still win it because he might have no cards on his side that can go any faster. But do I risk it 
mm. so I can then fire twice or recover uh, recover more because they have to reload and stuff like that mm. there. In which case, I can fire an even bigger volley. Mm. And there's this, there's this. If I spend that, then what what impact does that have on the other units? And and this is what I'm saying. At its core, is all about this mechanic. It's about this decision making process of of making your units. Uh, making your cards work for your units, mm -hmm. and and it is fascinating. But then the game has layers of additional optional depth. I call it optional because it's something that you and a friend would then just explore together. Um, uh, well, you know, it, it can be uh, as simple as there's 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 some great um, uh, additional rules for each unit on the back of their unit card. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, buffs and things that they get. So some units, if you activate them with a spade, mm -hmm. they get additional buffs because you have activated them with a spade. Mm -hmm. So that becomes another thing to keep in your mind. Right down to Lloyd, there are rules for throwing grappling hooks <laughs> and rules for removing grappling hooks. Okay, <laughs> there, there is, There's just... Beautiful layers of optional depth, and the key word is there is optional. It's there for you and a buddy to explore as you paint up these fabulously characterful one piece minis. And we'll be talking more about that because you have totally come. You've Lloyd's had almost like an about I turn, definitely. yeah, on minis. We'll <laughs> talk about that in tomorrow's show. Well, here's the thing but, for you as well the bolt ons you're talking about, Warren. Now, one thing to be very clear on here is those bolt ons do not overload you. And you don't have to use them if you don't no, want to. They're optional. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's that thing of if I've built a table and I've got my ships out on there, mm -hmm. I don't suddenly have to think of ten different things for running my ship. Yeah. It it all builds in together. So as you work your way through that rule book, you'll go through, you'll do your land battles. They'll then add in structures, and then they'll add in the ships, which are very similar to the structures, but mm -hmm. they move and they can fire. It all sounds really cool though, the whole activation system. It sounds like there's lots of options for maybe trying to bait someone into mm -hmm. I'll move this unit to make them feel under pressure, so maybe they play a spade on a unit that I don't really care about, so they go first and then I get to react more, yeah. and things like this. The, I was saying about commanders, there's beautiful things you can do, because the commanders come in about four different flavours, right? So you'll have a free commander that comes with your force, that's what we work with, yes. right? Mm -hmm. He has one command point that he can pass out to a unit to make them do one action, right? Mm -hmm. As you get higher level commanders, they get more of those command points. So I could have maybe two units out to the side of me, both fire at the same time, the unit that's activating fires as well, and you can get a big, massive volley fire going into something. Yeah, as long as they're within this kind of command radius, yes. you can start to give them extra, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you can extra like kind order of order guys to reload abilities. so that they're ready to go on their turn, get people up and running. You can shout at them to get back up and into the fight, take a fatigue test to actually get back up and going again. Let me, really tell, nice. let me tell you what ultimately um, made me just swoon at this game. Ship-to-ship -ship battles. Yeah. Proper, <laughs> full-on, with minis, ship-to-ship -ship battles with boarding actions and everything. And do you know what just absolutely made me die with, oh, God, that is so cool. The ships move during the battles, okay? Yes. <laughs> and as the captain of the ship, you can choose the number of sails that you've unfurled on the ship, which increases their speed. Mm -hmm. I was watching an episode in the early series of Black Sails where uh, Captain Flint is trying to chase down um, uh, another another pirate commander. He wants his guns yeah. for a big raid that he's planning. And he's scarpered off the island with these, these heavy guns. Mm -hmm. And so what Flint does is he has all the sails unfurled, but they're still an additional sail right at the top of the mast. And the 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 kind of the, the Scotty of the boat is going, I don't think he can take it, Captain. He says, unfurl it anyway. We need one more knot. And um, they, they do the unfurl this, and you can hear the creaking of the sails uh, 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 of the actual masts and stuff yeah. like that. And it just... Then, when I'm looking at this game, it's in there. Yeah, so you, you can you, have these boats that are moving at, at different speeds as you're trying to, to, to do battle on them. Yeah, and it's like, be, oh. be, be careful of this, Warren, because you can actually damage your rigging if you put on too much sail. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. you, you, you but, could maybe have canvas ripping off. But you can do other interesting things like ships, right? Mm -hmm. For example, I think you've played a game where a ship's sailed into port. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you fired your cannons from the ship onto the people on the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can do cool things like if there's a little building or something, you can sail up with your ship, fire your cannons onto the building. Yep. Or into units on land. That's devastating. Yeah. Right? Get the building to collapse because you hit it enough. Uh-huh. 
Set it on fire. Burn, <laughs> and burn everybody. <laughs> yep. I know. It's it, it's a storytelling machine, yep. this game. It is a storytelling machine. And I'm um, really excited to see the Dutch and the Native Americans come into yeah. it, because that's the next two factions that we were just chatting about. Mm. So don't forget them, because the, the miniatures for those are looking great. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the guys have been picking their factions. I'm going to try... That's what's it's, coming in the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Yes, the next Kickstarter is for two new factions. Yeah. And more ships. That's fine. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try it and recreate. It's the period. The period is a little touch early for Captain Flint and Blackbeard uh, and these ones. It. But I'm going to create a, a, a basically um, an un what do you call it an unaligned mm. pirate band. Mm. Okay, I want to create a, just an unaligned pirate band. They're not aligned to any country or anything like that. There. These are dudes that just want to go around and pillage and raid and <laughs> Maybe I'm being ignorant here. They're not just called privateers. No, no. Uh, no privateers no, no, no. are every legal pirates. Every no. <laughs> so you had Spanish privateers, English yeah. privateers, French privateers. Okay. If I'm a privateer, say I'm a French privateer, and I'm in Spanish waters. Yeah. No, 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 son. You're a pirate. That we mark yeah. that letter of mark you have. That's no good with a us. A privateer is a pirate who's backed by their king or their country, their, their country yeah. or their government that basically gives them a license to, to pirate, pirate. Yeah. other nations. I'm doing. The, the guys, we don't care. Pirate other nations. Yeah, that's what I, it was. I'm doing the basically the crazy unaligned Freeman. Um, I think it's time to talk about the news, Ben. Uh, what's going on in the world? Cool. Yeah. So uh, the first bit of news is actually some stuff that's uh, exclusive to us this weekend on the weekender, and it's some really cool looks forward to what's coming from uh, Foreground for their future Kickstarter, which is for the Legend of the Fabled Realms. Yeah. Now they're going to be doing some terrain, which is actually going to be part of stretch goals, and these are some of the kits that are going to be part of that. Right. So this is uh, some of the terrain from Broggenbridge. And this Ooh. is a little settlement that's been set up by adventurers and uh, treasure hunters in the ruins of Daldor. Mm -hmm. and so what they've done is they've bought timber and they've bought their, you know, all their bits and pieces from wherever they might have come from, and they've started to build onto the ruins themselves to make it a home in the middle of this, you know, mysterious magical landscape. Oh, look stuff. at that! Yeah. yeah. Oh, so what yeah. they're doing is uh, they're actually kind of filling out the ruins. Fixing oh, that is really into nice. the ruins of Daldor. Yeah. Oh, that! Oh, I really like the look of this. It's a clever yeah, idea. Yeah. yeah, and as I say, they're all treasure hunters and adventurers. So this is a place that's sort of springing up a little bit like a, a frontier town in America kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's going to have really cool bits and pieces in here. You've got the housing, as you can see. Hopefully, they're going to start to look forward to creating, you know, small shops and things potentially as well, sort of built yeah. into this too, cool. which would be absolutely amazing. It actually reminds me, if there's anybody out there actually who's read um, any of the Joe Abercrombie stuff to do with um, Red Country, which is one of his later books, there's a fantastic uh, village or town that's been set up in like the the arse end of nowhere effectively called Crease. Mm. And this really, really reminds me of that. And I think it'd be fantastic to try and do a little, a little bit of a themed village around this. I think it'd be really cool. But uh, yeah, absolutely amazing looking terrain for these little tiny kits that you just add onto the ruins of Daldor to make them look a little bit more uh, lived in, I guess. So. What's with the 3D map? Ah, yes, as well. So this is something that uh, Mel, the train teacher, is actually going to be working on with Foreground. Mm -hmm. Now, Foreground have designed that absolutely amazing map that you see there. Mel, the train tutor, is actually going to be building that into a proper 3D board. So you'll be able to look down on it a little bit sort of like Game of Thrones style intro. Yeah. And you'll be able to see all the rolling hills and the cities and stuff <laughs> built into it and things. It'll just be a rather impressive scene to see. So, I, ooh, I had a chat with Mel when he was over for the um, hobby weekend. That we yeah. Did. yeah. And he was well excited about this map. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's like, I love maps. Yeah. And I can't <laughs> wait to take this and just do all the little layers and get all the rolling hills and stuff. He's real excited about that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Well, you well, see, the creation of this map is actually years in the making because the world of the Fabled Realms is actually from the foreground guys' role-playing days. Yeah. So they've been role-playing for years, and this map is the culmination of that. So they have mm -hmm. years upon years of information that has been sifted and siphoned through to actually create this map of a world. Yeah. So whenever they're talking about, say, Tudenberg or something, mm -hmm. they've been there. They know what the people are like. They know what the world's meant to be like there, what the structures are meant to be like. So it's, it's really a living, breathing world more than just a map, which is really cool. <clears throat> we'll have to reach out to, to Mel and see if Mel can uh, keep us posted on the, this map build. Because I, I did say to him at the time, you know, Mel, I think I might just, you know, kidnap you. <laughs> if you're going to do that and, and get you a live blog, and you can you can yeah. update it to keep us to keep yeah. us posted on that, so yeah. we'll reach out to him and see if he if he has the time. So, you know, 
blogging and terrain making at the same time is no easy task, you no, know, as we no. know. So we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Um, it's it's easier because we have a room full of people that I can shout at. Come on, put a, hold this camera, yeah. hold this camera. Mal, I don't think has anybody to hold his camera. In other news, um, I believe we have the guys of Foreground here with us next week. We do, we do. So the guys are coming across to actually start filming games of the Legends of Fable Realms, which is their new game that's nice. coming. Out. I have been looking forward to sink my teeth into sort of the the more final finished version of this game because yeah. up until now everything's been very much in flux as they yeah. designed the system, got the game up and running. They were demoing it at Salute this year mm -hmm. and apparently the feedback they got was that everybody was loving the system, loving the way it worked. So great. I can't wait to make some great videos with the guys. And Fantastic. I'm, I'm wanting to do a couple of nice tables for a while. Are we going to try and get some of those videos out during the Kickstarter? So as, um, Maybe. We can maybe get one or two out. Yeah, well, let's, let's see what we can do. Promise but, nothing, but we uh, can other try. Than that, well, let's see if we can get the guys on the show next week mm. and uh, get them uh, chatting about what what to expect in the Kickstarter and stuff mm -hmm. like that there so we can kind of fill us in. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really excited about it. I, I think the background to this game is absolutely fabulous. Again, As it's, he it's says, a, there's so many the just subtle layers years. to the whole thing. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's years of work have went into creating this background from the stories they've told, from the adventures they've had, mm -hmm. and now they're opening up this world that they've created for everyone else to start playing into. I think it's yeah. fantastic. Right. In other news, there are planes... Um, new plastic uh, airborne for bolt action and Horsha gliders. Yeah. Ben, tell us a bit about them. Yeah, so uh, Warlord Games have got their new sort of plastic kit out coming, uh, I think it's this weekend or maybe next weekend actually. Uh, but this was something that they sort of showed off and little, teased a little bit at uh, Salute. But this is a new range of um, 30 miniatures that you get in a box to make up your British airborne. Oh, they come nice. with yeah. all kinds of fantastic, uh, you know, options as they normally do in Warlord kits. They've got loads of different heads and bodies and swaps and all kind of things like that. There's also, of course, plenty of weapons as well. So you've got Lee Enfield rifles, Sten guns, Bren guns, uh, Lee Enfield sniper rifles, piets, pistols, and all kinds of different things. And the thing that was actually really cool as well is they've actually added in a few different uh, bits and bobs so that you're actually able to make uh, Polish airborne as well. So mm. you can have some of the serving soldiers that uh, came over from Poland and then flew back in during the invasion and stuff with the British. And, and that's in the so, same yeah. box? That's in yeah, the same that's also box, in this so box, can... yeah. Uh, so do, do, does that allow you to make them all Polish or just make a, a subset of it Polish? I think you can make a, a small section of them Polish, so yeah. to sort of accurately reflect the kind of um, sort of dynamic that would have been at the period as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. it actually comes with um, a, like a selection of different transfers in there as well, so you can add little badges and things to them. So you've got the uh, you know the right markings and stuff too. Now these guys, because um, we know this from Pegasus Bridge. Yes. These guys were dropped in wooden gliders, yes. and basically just the engineless wooden gliders yep. uh, dropped in from a few thousand feet, yep. and then uh, all, all hope that the pilot might actually be able to land it in some way. Well, no, 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 don't say all hope, because it actually was an effective tactic. I mean, like, if you actually go to Pegasus Bridge, talk to John when he gets back from holiday, he has been to Pegasus Bridge, and there's a plinth that actually marks how close they got that glider landing to Pegasus Bridge. I think it's like maybe a couple hundred yards. Yes. That they were within. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've no doubt. Still, I wouldn't it still sounds like one. flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> yeah, I, I, really I definitely are. I would <laughs> not. You would not catch me in They put men in this, they put jeeps in this. <laughs> now they put yeah. jeeps they put in them. Jeeps in them. You yeah, see, they did, your yeah. glider, if you were in it, would have oh. been powered. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Brown fuel flying out the back. Um, they have built the glider as well. Uh, I, I think this is Sarissa, isn't it? Sarissa has done this. So here it is here. So uh, Sarissa are working alongside Ooh, uh, Warlord. A lot. Sarissa and well, Sarissa and Warlord are actually doing a lot of stuff together at the moment. So they've yeah. been, you know, working on different bits and pieces. And uh, so yeah, this is the Horsha glider, as you can see here. It's done in twenty-eight mil, which is fantastic. Breaks down into its nice component parts as well. I've actually saying, uh, and a couple of people commenting as well, that they what they want to do with this is they'll make a couple of the gliders that landed safely, and then they'll potentially put a couple of them together as wrecks and stuff as well to mm. make uh, little terrain pieces yeah. too. So, yeah, very cool. It is very cool stuff. Whereas if this was us, if we got this when we were kids, we'd have just gone and found the tallest flat or something and chucked it. <laughs> He's Will right, it actually, because um, as as a couple of kids, we could only have been about eight years old, maybe maybe about six or so, mm. and we came home um, one year and found that uh, Santa uh, had been while we were away at our grannies. So mm -hmm. we came home and there was Action Man aircraft and everything, like oh, an Action Man aircraft. Obviously, to a child, it's like Rawr! like this we're, size. We're, we're talking like this size, big, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a, and, and so these are big aircraft. Yeah. But where across from where we lived, 
and there was a there was a, I'm sensing a, a horror story a block of a block of flats <laughs> it's like three stories high or yeah something. it was about about three maybe uh-huh. four stories high and we climbed up these stairs that are kind of like on the outside of the flats uh-huh. and went up to the top and then threw the airplanes off now um, hang on did you put the action, <laughs> did you put the action man into the airplane oh yes every time okay so it had a pilot that oh, wasn't yes, your problem it had, it had a pilot. you're saying every time there was yeah. only one time yeah yeah we, we, we didn't get to do it again it didn't it didn't particularly survive but what we did do is we got action man tanks uh-huh. and there was don't a, tell me you threw them off too They're no no, no, we no, no. Far, more fun. far more fun than that man yeah. there was a slide, a right. slide nearby, and we used to slide down the slide on the tanks. <laughs> it was it was brilliant. So uh, that was back in the days when the action man stuff was big enough for us to get on it. So it was like, <laughs> yes, very cool. Uh, right, uh, we've mentioned the Simon Expo. Yes, um, I'm wondering if you're going to get to see this, um, uh, but they've also released uh, teasers for the new earth cat teasers ah. damn these Mortar are nice. yeah so what are you going to look at these oh yeah. yes yeah so uh this is some stuff as you say from simon for oh. uh, the c- continuing expansion of dark age and this is for the earth cast which have sort of been sort of a little bit left in the background uh, uh up until now and this is uh, two of their characters which are Grakun, uh who's on the left and J- jamazi i think on the right and they're two of the big sort of main characters that sort of will be sort of the the focus point for this faction as it comes to the tabletop um one of the cool things is they've shown off a little, a few of the stats and stuff over on their own blog. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit about more about how they work in the game and stuff, you can go and check that out. Mm-hmm. But the thing that really sort of grabbed me with these guys was just the like this raw sort of elemental power that they've got to them, mm-hmm. which I think has sort of been a, a, a focus across most of the Jagiri. But it really comes to life here when you see like the fire and the sort of crystals built into their bodies and stuff like yeah. that, which is just absolutely amazing. Look at the paint um, jobs though on those. Mm-hmm. I know. Aren't they I know. beautiful? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like secondly good. Yeah, they are like the, the paint jobs, the muscular tone and stuff on them is just like, oh yeah. my god! Well, How ben, do you do that? Ben, who's the the other character in this post? Yeah, so the second post is actually the limited edition version of Grakun uh, that will be available at um, uh, exhibitions and and stuff like that, conventions. Uh, so if you are at the Simon Expo this weekend then you'll be able to go up and uh, buy Graken potentially in this limited edition form. This is the sort of version of him uh, before he left the... Well, I think it's after he left the sort of uh, confines of his duty and his job as part of the Earthcast. So this is him sort of kitted out with a bit more sort of the tech out there, out in the sort of wild lands of Dark Age and stuff. So, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. I see, this, this is one of the things I know about Daguri. Most of them, they don't like to use a lot of technology. The Firecast do, but they've weakened their elemental power for it. So I'm not mm-hmm. sure how this is actually going to work into the storyline, him breaking away from the Earthcast and maybe picking up a bit of technology. I'm wondering how that will affect him. Hmm. Sorry, this, this is me just going on a mind blurb. <laughs> oh, okay, you're allowed to do that. All I'm thinking yeah. is, wow, I love these sculpts. Every mm. time they I see amazing. the new sculpts, I'm just like, oh, what? what? Okay. How yeah. did you do that? Uh, now that your mind's been blown, yeah. allow us to blow it again. <laughs> uh, because uh, Tabletop World have been running a terrain competition mm-hmm. where people have been able to paint up their terrain. Oh. Now, even unpainted Tabletop World is terrain just their makes terrain you go, oh, as in tabletop worlds terrain. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, if we bring this up, Ben, uh, talk us through this. Oh. Yeah. So they ran a competition uh, to open it up to their customers who picked up their terrain to bring in some amazing projects and stuff like that. And what you're seeing here is the first, second, and third place um, sort of projects that were done by this. Yeah. Um, as Lloyd said, this is absolutely crazy terrain. I think to to a certain degree they build this stuff block by block. Yes, they do. Amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the first one of these is the Fisherman's Wharf, and this was the grand prize, the first place winner mm-hmm. by Simone Palenz. And it's absolutely stunning. It's got some amazing work gone into the buildings themselves. They're just absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's added in things like the flowers, and he's you can almost get a little bit of that sort of stink of the fish in the sea. Yeah. And stuff do you know what this it. looks like to me, right? With the stylized look of the buildings that come out. Mm-hmm. of the company and the way this has been painted it looks like you're looking at an oil painting yeah yes, it's got that it? vibe yeah it yeah. does it I mean, does yeah it's kind of got an assassin's creed vibe for me for Ezio's hometown especially mm. with the flowers and stuff mm. yeah yeah, yeah. It but it's absolutely good. amazing uh talking of sort of assassin's creed and a little bit of a venetian theme the second place uh went to venicia il Serenissima, I think I got that right. And this was by uh, David Romea, and he's done sort of like a Venetian theme to his thing. So you've got the sort of look of the canals and stuff built into this really nice sort of bridge that's going over this little 
it's a tiny waterway as well so they've used a lot of the big townhouses and packed them together so that it's a little bit more of a, a sort of um bustling urban landscape and stuff like that so yeah and obviously you've got the little pe- people in the windows as well so you can also get a little bit of a narrative and a story going on there at the same time which is really great it is it's Very just amazing cool. isn't it like it that's just a stunner as well mm-hmm. that is crazy good and then what, what the third one was cottage by tilo Schmedel. Shimedal, yeah. Tilo mm-hmm. Shimedal, yeah. And um, this is one of their smaller kits, and it's uh, some might say comparatively this is basic, but I couldn't possibly say that. It's yeah. absolutely amazing, and it's absolutely packed with detail. I love the work that he's done to the roofs. It's really fantastic. All the different sort of slats and things. You can actually see the wood grain and stuff worked into them, which is brilliant. Yeah. And then he's done some really nice sort of subtle uh, flocking and sort of grass work around the outside as well, to sort of bring it to life and set it in this nice idyllic sort of countryside mm-hmm. feel. Again. But the flowers and stuff set this off. That's got the fable-esque feel, and it has even more of a fable-esque feel because of the flowers. Yeah, yeah. flowers is something I don't really do. You should. We should do more of it. I just I'm, never. Really... That's why we have shades of spring. I never as really a train get around to using flowers. See, I don't know. This is something John has experimented with a little bit recently, and it's it's really not as difficult to do as you might think. So you know the grass tufts you get from uh, like the army painter and stuff. Yes. What he does is he just puts a little bit of like PVA over the top of them and dips it into like. Uh, Clump foliage, mm-hmm. different colour clump, clump foliage, and it just comes up as nice little bunches of flowers. Well, Which he then proceeds to stick onto his tiger tanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you see, you can, it's even simpler than that. You can buy pre made flower tufts. Mm. Yeah. What I mean is, uh, especially. It's on working a, them into a project. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that's, I do struggle with that when I struggle to go, like, let's say that, that, that um, Mediterranean board mm. table thing. What Mediterranean table? <sighs> The Caribbean. 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 All right, okay. Right. <laughs> Wrong side of the Med- world. Mediterranean? <laughs> Wrong side of the world. We got the Crusades going that, on that could, have, that could have probably used some flowers and stuff. Yes. Maybe. But when at that scale, once you start putting one flower on, oh, you, have you have to, to put a lot on. You have to put a lot on. Yeah, you have to put a lot on. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just like mm. one flower. And then it's a case of what does it add? Mm. You know, and what does it detract then? You know, can you still move your minis around and things yeah. like that? There's a lot to be said about, you know, making war games terrain is not the same as making a diorama. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Um, you have to make something that's ultimately playable yeah. um, with, with minimal hassle. Because, you know, there are tables with lovely slow gradients and stuff like that. But we all know that you put your minis on it and your minis fall over. Yeah. And you can't balance your minis and things like that. Hence why there is reasoning to the way we do kind of multi-layer things. It's not only to make it modular, but it's also to make it that you, you, you're never concerned about your minis kind of falling mm. over unless you're right up at the edges and stuff like that. You have nice flat surfaces, yeah. but you still have the, the overall effect yeah. of, uh, of cliffs and, and, and rocky outcrops. Well, this, this is something you did uh, a while ago, Lloyd, whenever we did the, uh, the dry dock table and put a cliff on the back of it. Yeah. Whenever mm-hmm. we were actually cutting in the steps into the cliff face, you were very, very careful to make sure that those steps on the cliff face were deep enough to take the bases of the miniature. Yes. So that the miniatures would actually sit properly. Ultimately, you know, you want a combination of what is beautiful, mm. but what is Functional. playable. Yeah. You know, and, so, and probably playable in many respects trumps that because mm-hmm. otherwise you're just building a, a, a diorama, which is a very different, uh, different approach. Yeah. Um, we have uh, the last two pieces of news. They're kind of uh, more kind of just little updates yeah. um, on some Kickstarters uh, that are going on. And um, the first one is uh, Mantix uh, Terrain Crate. Yeah. Um, how many days are we down to, Ben, on the Terrain uh, Crate? I think we are down to. I will just check. We are down to around. It, at this point, it'll be one day left. Yeah. maybe one of the bit okay, days so left. I think breath. by this point. Right. So, so you. Yeah. You have to get stuck in on this. We have just received um, the 3D prints, um, some images of the, the 3D prints of the terrain. So Please. have a look at these. Yeah, so, so uh, the guys at Mantic sent these through, showing off a few of the different kits they've been working on in terms of the 3D styles. Uh, as you can see, they've gone through a little of them, a few of them, and they've themed them as well. So you've got the first one there, which is um, some of the mining kit that I know you were very interested about uh, there, Warren. So you've yes. got the mining cart with the tracks as well, mm-hmm. and the little side of crystals and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Uh, following on is actually my favourite set. I, I love, love this. the Wizard Study. Yes. Absolutely amazing. I absolutely love yeah. this. The Chesterfield chair. Um, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, this just this, this is just great. <laughs> you just want to climb into your smoking I, jacket. I just want to I just want to get into my smoking jacket, get a pipe, and just sit <laughs> in that chair. But it's gonna to have to be a really long pipe. Oh oh yes, of course. Yeah, I think the, the thing that really got me with these, uh, in particular with the arcane study, the wizard study, was that not only were these sort of um, these chests and these these uh, these uh, the, these things f- not not you know like bare. They actually had things on them. So there was books yeah. and scrolls. I like and hats the additional hat. Like that. The the it's like a sorting hat. It's like Sometimes the Harry sort Potter hat, sorting yeah. hat stuck in there. It's brilliant. Love that one. It, it doesn't only stop there because they it, if you keep going down, Justin, mm-hmm. yeah, they the then tavern. have uh, the tavern stuff. Which is, uh, I, nice. I, I'm loving the fireplace. Yeah, well, you know, this, this is you this is like Hero Quest on steroids, so boys. It really uh, is. If we're going to do any blood and plunder, we need some of those barrels with all the yes. booze. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> and then the last one is more generalized crates, rubbles, and adventuring yeah. gear. Yeah. So really but, nice. Yeah. I, mean, this... I, I think we said I think we said it a little bit before, but um, this kind of terrain that's coming out now from Mantic, mm. you combine that with what um, you know the guys that Reaper are doing with Bones and what yeah. WizKids are now doing with the unpaid miniatures as well. Basically, DMs are going to have everything they need to make really yeah. awesome dungeons and mm. stuff. So this is going to be fantastic. The golden age of DM. Yeah, what what we're showing here is just scratching the surface of what they have unlocked mm-hmm. in yeah. each of those three terrain crates that they that they've designed. And they have sci-fi stuff in. No, 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 no. They'll is do that... a separate Kickstarter for a sci-fi sure terrain. Are you sure there is crate. no sci-fi stuff in um, any of this in uh, this Kickstarter? I'm almost I'm almost 100% sure. There are a few, I think there are a few um, sort of later stretch goals that actually added a few bits and bobs, but the actual overall crates that they're going to be doing for sci-fi is going to be kept for a future one. So yeah, yeah. It, it's um, this is this is basically all, all of your fantasy dreams uh, coming <laughs> together. Uh, it, it's it's absolute must buy. Anybody oh, no. anybody who does any kind of role plan or or any kind of dungeon crawling fantasy dreams. Do yes. they have a tent? Yes, they have tents, they have sleeping bags, they have everything. That's all sorted. Oh, do they have a... <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> oh, uh... They have something that looks suspiciously <laughs> like a <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now, gents, I've just went through the Kickstarter of a yeah. quick scroll down it, there is nothing sci-fi in this No, no, I think okay? they teased sci-fi stuff that, that will be coming oh, in, well, in a it, sci-fi yeah. one. Yeah. But I, to be honest, I don't want any sci-fi stuff in this. Mantic, please concentrate on just really beautiful fantasy stuff so that we, you know we pick up the crates and as a dm imagine right imagine you get together with your friends mm. and you're you're going to be playing um a dungeon crawler or an rpg or something and you just have this stuff you just have this stuff for access and you just you're laying it you're laying mm. it all out and it's just bringing the whole thing to life oh it just it's dollhouses for men <laughs> <laughs> And ladies, of course. But you know, yeah, it's a... being able to populate the world you're playing in with incidental pieces like that just makes it brilliant. Even wargaming tables it's are going to be fantastic. It's with all things. about the 2.5D dungeon to me. For yeah. me, okay. And for me, it's wargaming tables it's just... with the incidental pieces that just bring the world to life. Yeah, it, it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. It is an absolute no-brainer of a Kickstarter. Uh, next up, also on its final day, yep. yeah. Is reload, yes, um, uh, which we talked about, and we've got a big prize for that from yep. Archon, and we um, have a, a demo game up for load, which is the the last version of it. So reload is them coming back to revisit it. Mm-hmm. Um, now we have some of the minis actually here that we can show off, don't we? Oh, we don't just have the minis here that we can show off. Uh-huh. The guys sent us through painted minis, right? So it's the heroes that are painted. So if I get this open, well, before we do that, Ben, can you bring us up to speed on uh, uh, anything else about this particular Kickstarter? Yeah, sure. So just to sort of give, effectively give you a little bit of the spark notes around this one, it's uh, a two to six player PvP style board game, and it's done in the style of like sort of tower defensey MOBA style video game. Yeah. So if you've played the likes of you know Dota or LOL or anything like that, mm. this is kind of the scheme you're getting here. Uh, it's played with you can either play it as sort of a one v one, or you can have multiple players in there as well. At least be picking uh, different types of characters, so the strikers, guardians, mages, archers, and assassins, and they are variations upon many many of these, and. Uh, um, the whole idea is that you'll be trying to sort of fight for these lanes and try and get to and beat your opponents and stuff. So yeah, really cool. Right. The other thing that's worth noting is mm-hmm. that the game um, ultimately comes with this thing that Prodos or Archon have been working out, mm. which is uh, it's like a foam tray with a nice card yes. back. And the foam tray has a card back, 
Oh, careful. So you can actually see what minis are supposed to go where. That's mm. cool. Isn't that, isn't that nice? It's a really clever piece of design. But talk us through some of the some of the minis that, that, that we got in, Justin. So myself and John, the way this plays is it's, it's essentially 6v6 to your side, right? So you yeah. live a team of six, you meet a live a team of six, and you mm -hmm. have the three lanes to work through, right? Yeah. So some of the characters are like this, which is a big tortoise sort of tank character, right? Oh, very nice. And when you said the, painted, you didn't tell, yeah. warn me that it was going to be like, oh my god, amazing yeah, painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So beautifully painted. Uh, I mean, like, uh, trust me, whenever I brought these out of the box the first time to play the game, I was just like, should I really play with these? They're so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of them. Now, now, the other thing that's worth noting, uh, noting mm. Lloyd, is all of these are based on the new Unicast yes. uh, casting system. Uh, that Archon and Protoss uh, use both yes. for them and for their other Kickstarter partners and things like that. Mm -hmm. So every one of these miniatures comes basically um, as you see it. There's no assembly of all uh, involved at all. They, they mm -hmm. are cast as single piece in in the most beautiful resin. To be honest, you know the but details the, that are in the minis is, is the incredible. The sharpness of them just blows you away. Mm -hmm. Wow, absolutely mind blowing. And they're really characterful. I love all these yeah. different... Because every one of them you pulled out has a really unique base type to it. Yes. It's not just base type, but it's the actual style of the miniature itself. You get a real sense of what the character yeah. is But what I mean is, people will style up different characters, but who's going to the effort to yeah. have so many different unique bases? Yeah, they're just, not, they're not just, just sitting on, on plain bases. Look at this big bad boy here. Uh, that's actually one I didn't get to play with. Yeah. Because <laughs> you actually get a couple extra, because you can play this game 2v2. Mm -hmm. At which point you'll add in an extra mage to each side, and again you'll control three. Your mate will control three. Wow, and jobs are good. If you're not even going, if you're it's not even going, if you're not even going to play this, this is like such oh, a yeah. collector's item. Painter's dream. Yeah, have a look at this one, look. What do you see these? That is Drago. <laughs> so he's a a big warrior tank who can do a bit of healing on the tabletop. The gameplay is actually really really fun for this as well. Now it's a MOBA game, so you can, if you and your mate are good with your tactics, you can really, really bog each other down and make your mate work for it. Well, it's tower defense, isn't it? Uh, uh, well, lane defense. Lane, lane defense, defense, right, okay. Because okay. lane defense is very different from tower defense. Okay. I'm very... <laughs> 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 In my mind it isn't, right? Because a tower defends a lane. Yes, but it's tower defense is you're building the towers to defend the lane. Yeah. In lane defense, <laughs> you have sets of creeps where your heroes are going up the, the actual lanes to actually make the difference to the creeps because the creeps will just ah. keep to evenness. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's Dota, which I haven't played, but it's Dota yeah. on or something like Heroes uh, of the Storm on the tabletop. Yeah. So it Essentially, is. yeah. But it's it's a really really fun game with some really interesting design mechanics to it. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous looking miniatures, and the design mechanics themselves are really cool as well because. Between the lanes, you actually have forests, and you can have your heroes running in between the forests. Mm -hmm. As soon as you go into the forest, you can be drawing from the forest deck. Yeah. And as things come out of the forest deck, you could get attacked by, yes. say, this, so Centaur Chieftain, uh -huh. and actually earning yourself more gold to actually upgrade your characters. So you've got yeah. like a shop that's there the whole time that you can be buying stuff from. You can find good stuff, you can find bad stuff. But the, the whole thing is, it's trying to get that, that edge on your opponent on one side or the other, a breakthrough somewhere, mm -hmm. to actually go for that end game like it always was in the old Dota games. It transfers that MOBA style gameplay to the tabletop fantastic. Well, this is your last uh, your last chance to get involved in it. Um, the, they have unlocked a bunch of new sculpts, new mm -hmm. epic sculpts and things like that yep. there. I think there's like dozens of miniatures in the box. Like what we've shown you there was just oh, yeah, the top layer. That's there. just the heroes. You know, it's, um, oh, there's another layer. Yeah, there's another layer of all so of the... You get look at there. enough creeps to actually do both sides of the table. Yeah. And then you get specialist creeps in there as well. So you can get little bonuses for the actual creep waves going up the table edges or the table lanes. And potentially reloads even bigger again. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, but is it the same game? It's the same core to the game, right? Yeah. yeah. But they're retweaking bits here and there to make it run smoother so, so the and adding in new So stuff. the Kickstarter is not for this. No, it's not for that. For it's for a, no, no. a, a so, new version of that. So here, if you bring this up, you see. So, so these miniatures getting. and stuff, mm -hmm. this isn't... This isn't isn't yeah. what the Kickstarter is. You get these miniatures in these it. Miniatures you get are additional in it, stuff too. Plus additional stuff. Ah, okay. So as we so scroll down... So there's 75 minis in the box, Lloyd. Wow. So that's all your heroes. Yeah. You're getting a new epic version of one of your heroes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you scroll on down, you've got all your tokens, item cards, the rest. And now we're coming into the creeps that you're going to get along with it. Mm -hmm. You're then moving down into the unlock stretch goals. So we've got new heroes coming through. Oh, hello. Yeah. Look at <laughs> these. Really fantastic. Oh my word. Look so at that crocodile dude next. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, look at the the sort of what is that? Tandra. I have no idea, but I want one. <laughs> Dear me. Right, keep and going. Got new forest mm. cards, new item cards, new character cards, and then on down in here. So this is some of the stretch goals that they've been unlocking. So the artwork for them is gorgeous as well. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder what they're trying to unlock now. Just let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Keep going, because you're a long way from it. They're at 140,000. <laughs> oh, so, there we go. Oh. So uh, epic, they're still unlocking uh, epic stuff. So Epic um, Grok. So it's mm -hmm. the epic version of this last character that they yeah. unlocked. And then they've got uh, a new dwarf character riding a toad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that could be fun. That could be a very fun skull. Oh, man, this is now, just full of... No doubt, stuff. Uh, I'm going to mention because no doubt it'll come up in in the comments. Mm. Okay, um, Prodos have had a Kickstarter that uh, that uh, has run into ongoing problems on the AVP. Yes. Okay. Um, since that though, mm. um, it's that's a that's a project that is still very slowly kind of working through Branding the trudge through, yeah. of, of trying to sort itself out. Mm. It's a nightmare scenario for anybody involved in it. And to be fair, including Prodos, it, 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 it's not good for anybody. But since that, which was a very, it was an, I, uh, an external IP mm -hmm. uh, project, they, they had been saying to us, look, if, if, we, if we were in control of our own IP, we wouldn't be having those issues. Mm. So they came out with load. Okay, yeah. and they they funded load successfully mm -hmm. and delivered load successfully. Mm -hmm. They then came up with was it Vanguard of War? Uh, no, no, no. That that's uh, Reforged Studios, and I believe the guys. No, no. There was a, there was another one. If you click on, uh, if you go back to their Kickstarter, you'll find out the name. But they they did have another one, which again. They funded successfully and have delivered successfully. They've, the, this unicast system is being used by uh, by miniatures companies um, uh, throughout Kickstarter. So, uh, yeah. so the the studios that are behind this, yeah. If you click on three, three created, created. Um, yeah, Vanguard of War. Oh right, apologies. Ha -ha. All right, you got me. You see, I'm not surprised because people wet themselves when they see this stuff up close. Yeah, it's. Sorry, it I was is, thinking of War It Forged. is very good. But Not bad for anybody. Uh, for anybody that decides uh, whether, whether or not to get involved in something like this, um, yes, there is an ongoing, very slow fulfillment thing going on with the AVP. They're at least grinding through it. Um, there are reports. At this stage, we are still getting reports that people are still um, receiving their pledges, albeit slowly. Mm -hmm. There are still reports that there is um, the, f the future phases of the project are being worked on. Mm -hmm. um, Prodos... Who, who run the AVP side of things mm -hmm. um, are, you know, they're giving they're giving backers options to convert stuff that hasn't been made yet into stuff that has been made of equal mm. value and stuff like that. They're trying their best to, to get through that, but the Load and Vanguard of War have both delivered successfully. Yeah. So you know, to be fair, they have demonstrated that um, a unicast is just it works, unbelievable. It works beautifully. And B, whenever they're in charge of their own IP, they're running Kickstarters and they're fully delivering the Kickstarters and they're delivering them fast. Mm. There's there's been no holdups uh, as of yet. Well, that so, was that was part of the Unicast thing. It was to be able to produce fantastic quality miniatures. Mm. Yeah. In a fast turnaround. So uh, ultimately, as always, it, it, these things it, these things come up in the comments. So I just wanted to I just wanted to to, to put it, it up, out yeah. there. You know what we what mm. we are seeing. Um, from where we're sitting on this. Mm -hmm. Right. Take a quick break, will we? We are going to take a quick break because on the subject of Kickstarters, we have two, we have two blinders. And I think mm. um, after we get back, you're going to be sitting down with James yes. for an update on Drowned Earth. Yeah, so just before his project ends, I want a last little bit of a catch up to see how his experience went and what he's been doing with the community. He's got some fantastic stuff coming up. So check out the, the hub ads. Now, before they do that, yeah. Drowned Earth. Yes. Drowned Earth takes place um, on almost like a waterlogged... It's a post, post apocalyptic world where the world has been rebuilt. It's starting to recover. So the technology is coming back in. People know what they're up to. But it's, it's beginning those adventures and going into the deep, dark areas where... We have a demo going. game of this as we well, do. don't we? We do. It's uh, a let's fantastic play. system. So let, let, we'll get a link and get, get a picture of the gaming table of that mm -hmm. because... Um, it, oh, it, it, takes, it takes place on almost like this flooded earth, Lloyd. Mm. And you can imagine creating a gaming table where you have uh, the, the water 
and you have the peaks of buildings mm. kind of sticking out of the out of the water. Okay. So it's a bit like um, what was that movie? Um, the and the day of day of day after tomorrow or day something? after tomorrow? Yeah, day uh, after tomorrow. Oh, we're New York floods. Yeah, yeah, no, it's when it goes all frozen. Yeah. Imagine whenever also, it melts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, if you're a fan of the new game Horizon Zero Dawn, that will give you some ideas of the kind of look mm. yeah. for this kind of world as well. So yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll let you sit down with him. Yeah. He'll be right back after these hubs. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, I have been joined by James from The Drowned Earth and we're here for a little bit of a catch up as The Drowned Earth Kickstarter comes into its final bit of time on Kickstarter. So James, this has been your first experience of Kickstarter so I'm really interested to hear how it has went for you, how the, the campaign has ran for you guys. Well, I'd love to tell you, but I've kind of lost the ability to speak or think. Uh, we've got five days to go. I haven't slept much in the last <laughs> four weeks. <laughs> oh, I can um, imagine. Yeah, but it's been it's been a uh, it's been a roller coaster ride is how I describe it. It's been amazing. Uh, the reaction that we've had has been uh, stupendous. You know, we we funded in one hour uh, and we were three hundred percent funded by the end of the first day. Uh, so if you remember, we had uh, we we started with the two factions that we'd already had that we brought along and and played on the um, uh, on the Let's Play video, mm -hmm. uh, and the other two factions were locked. Uh, well. Both them and the physical copy of the rule book were unlocked on uh, day one. Uh, and since then, we've added all kinds of crazy dinosaur models and tokens and templates and uh, profile cards for all of the miniatures and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it's been it's been excellent. And the thing that's really kind of bold. Uh, bowled me over is you know i'd sort of i had an idea of what it might be like if if it proved to be you know popular and if people liked it but i hadn't i hadn't really um anticipated the level of involvement that people would have with the world you know mm -hmm. i mean um four people have sent me um uh, fiction stories just emailed me out of the blue. Not really? not people I know. Just yeah, just just random backers who are just like yeah. I just I hope I hope you don't mind. I wrote a story in your world, and I'm like yeah, of course I don't mind. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, like, th this is the real key for it is you're wanting to bring a world to life, but that world is then a world that people have to go out and have their adventures in. So it's yeah. actually really yeah. cool that something like that has happened. Exactly, and and because the game has already has such a kind of um, an RPG feel to it and that kind of narrative thing going on. Um, you know, it's it's really important for me that people find the world interesting and engaging and that kind of stuff. So that's been really, really rewarding. Really, really, really rewarding. Mm -hmm. And do you guys have any plans just for, for final pushes and things to actually get on with as you close in on the, the last little bit of time until you, you finish up and say, that's us done, now we need to get to work making this for you? Yeah, absolutely. So we've done uh, we've done quite a lot during the campaign. We we had a a, a live painting session uh, a little while ago, and if people go to the YouTube channel, they can catch up with that, and they can also catch up with the uh, live sculpt that we did. We had one of the characters. Uh, uh, so uh, you you might have seen uh, Nix, the leader of the artifactors. We uh, we unlocked her on a on a raptor. Yeah, I saw so that. she's riding really cool. around on a on a crazy, angry-looking dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we are in the process at the moment of sculpting Canada, the leader of the firm, mm. on a giant praying mantis. <laughs> um, so, nice. Uh, yeah, because why not? Um, yeah, of course, why not? So we got uh, James W. Kane uh, to uh, show everyone how to sculpt that live. You know, uh, so he's uh, uh, he was just taking us through. Um, how you start with you know a blob of clay and turn it into something uh, turn it into something meaningful you know um, and on Sunday so I don't know I think this goes out on Saturday on yep. the Sunday we uh, we will be going back to that and he's going to show us another couple of hours of sculpting now the model is a little bit further along uh, and nice. that model hasn't been unlocked yet so let's hope we get that uh, unlocked during the uh, last few days of the campaign because we've mm -hmm. got we've got just under a week to go now 
Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, you've done some fantastic work because I remember whenever we had you guys across doing the demo game and stuff, you were saying you really wanted to get the the second two factions out there, get that hard uh, back yep. rule book, and get the, the rafters in there. The rafters have turned out beautifully now that I've seen they them. They have, yeah. They're lovely, I'm really, they? really impressed with that. And uh, they're big as well. They're on 40 mil bases. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Uh, now, there's another thing that you guys were doing, which was uh, you've been writing a little bit of a story for one of the That's characters right. of the world. So yeah, could, you, could you give I us a little more it, info about that? Sure, sure. I, I called it Choose Your Own Adventurer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and effectively what I did was every every week of, in fact, the, 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 the next one's just gone out. The last one, rather, has just gone out. Um, I wrote a little episode of, of a story. Mm. Um, and we started off just with a shadowy character, no gender, no race, no name, nothing, yeah. floating down a river on a raft and suddenly waking up with insomnia. <laughs> um, no, um, not insomnia. Amnesia. Uh, what's Amnesia. That's the. There one. we go. Uh, I I have insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, amnesia. And then at the end of each uh, episode of the story, uh, I gave the uh, the backers a poll. So they decide, you know, is it male or female? Mm. Is it this race, this race, or this race? Mm. Uh, is she going to try and find food? Is she going to build a spear or is she going to get walking? Mm. You know, um, and, and at the end of each episode, we uh, had this poll, which then at the end of the whole process determines the nature of this figure. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the campaign, we're going to sculpt it. And everyone uh, who backed the campaign for one um, uh, faction starter mm. um, or more will get that model completely free. Wow, uh, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, I just I really wanted a way of kind of involving people and bringing them into the campaign and bringing them into the world, really. So we've also been doing, uh, you know, we're now in the last week I announced uh, competition week. Mm -hmm. And so we're running all kinds of uh, little competitions where people comment with their concept for a location in mm -hmm. the Drowned Earth. Um, and the winner, their location will actually go in the rule book. Oh, cool. um, and what else are we doing? There's uh, a character concept as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've got um, uh, best proxy miniature. So obviously no one's got their miniatures yet, but everybody's mm -hmm. um, thinking about proxies so they can start playing and start playtesting mm -hmm. uh, right away. So a little bit of a painting competition there. All kinds of stuff. It's all, it's all happening in the last week, basically. Very cool. Now, I do notice... Now, I. I pick up on certain things. So, as you were talking about the character that people have been designing there, you yep. said she. Now, have people been seeing the results as you've went along, or have you been sort of playing them close to the chest? No, no. I've uh, at, at the um, in the next episode, mm. we see whatever the uh, whatever information was voted for is represented in the next story, so they can really see their decisions guiding mm. the story as well as creating the character. I okay. felt like that was quite important. Okay. A bit um, like uh, re reading a fight fighting fantasy mm. novel. You know, that's that's one of those classic experiences from a lot of, a lot of our childhoods, uh, yep. but. You wouldn't have a wee bit of artwork that I could maybe sneak peek to people here on the show. I do. I yeah. I, uh, you can you can see her right now. <laughs> here you go, guys. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh wow, she looks really nice, man. Yeah, I love she's the very design cool. here. Completely different race. I was I was pleased to see people, uh, and actually the decision for which which species she was 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 an over like a landslide, uh, mm -hmm. which was very interesting because it was the it was the least um uh it wasn't you know um oh what's the right way of putting it it's the most alien like really mm. the least recognizable from from our world you know all of the other uh species concepts mostly are kind of anthropomorphic animals and this one has got a little bit of feline stuff going on there but it's very very different mm. um so it's interesting to see people go for that well, you see, th this is the thing. As as the world now expands and grows, once it actually gets into people's hands, it's going to be interesting to see sort of the, the different motivations and stuff that actually play out through the storylines that people are going to be fit to play out in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So. And I really want to, uh, you know, post Kickstarter and as, mm -hmm. as the game progresses and as, as we move forward, I really want to, I, the, the player base to be involved mm. in the evolving story uh, of the world because I've got a I've got a story planned out there's there's things happening in this world which mm. you know we're slowly going to reveal and investigate with campaigns and you know scenarios on the mm -hmm. website and all kinds of cool stuff like that
Mm. Now that that's something I like to see as a, a living, breathing world because sometimes yeah. you'll see yeah. games they'll land and they're quite static in the way they actually tell their story. You are yeah. at this point in history, you will stay at this point in history for quite some time. Having yeah. stuff growing and evolving with online campaigns, scenarios, things like that feels really, really fluid. It feels like a living, breathing world, which is really, yeah. really cool. So brilliant yeah. idea. I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> so uh, anything else happening or is it literally just the last mad dash to get everybody in, get those last stretch goals knocked out? Yeah, we've got we've got a few. Uh, so we've um, the the model uh, that we've created. Liana, her name is. Mm. Um, she's a mercenary model, uh, but we also had. In fact, there's one left. There's one left. If anybody out there uh, fancies the idea, uh, we've got a, a pledge level called the Gene Splicer, mm. um, where you can create your own model and it becomes a permanent part of the range. Ooh, cool. um, and uh, we've we've got five out of the six of those are taken now and five is what you need to run a faction uh, to have a faction uh, so it occurred to me really we should make them a faction of their own as well and so you'll have uh, these mercenary models liana's one so with liana mm -hmm. there'll actually be six of these yeah um mercenary models which you can put with any other faction mm. or they can work together as a as a faction on their own uh, so that's something i'm quite excited uh, to bring to the table just to give those list building opportunities um, and the dinosaur models work in exactly the same way so at the moment we've got uh, dilophosaurs you know spitty from jurassic park he's they sort of um, mm -hmm. run through the undergrowth and stun people by spitting poison at them mm -hmm. um, we've got over raptors sort of crazy attack turkeys um, <laughs> and the raptors that, that you've seen already i'm oh, sorry another, crazy attack uh, turkeys turkeys has just caught me off guard <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice one <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, well, I mean, like, I, I like the idea that uh, the people who have jumped in on that top end pledge level are actually going to be able to have their guys stand alone in a faction yeah, and actually yeah. see that team that they're going to create become a cohesive faction will be really, really cool. Yeah, I think it is. And, and we're actually going to, the guys are up for um, coming on um, uh, Hangouts on mm -hmm. Roll20 and running an RPG session of, of their characters coming together. Um, because I, I think I mentioned in the, uh, in, in the last weekend, uh, mm. interview that every backer at two pounds or more is going to get a, a copy of my little homebrew, uh, drowned earth RPG system, which is mm. just, just a few pages long, just to get you up and running and, mm -hmm. and role playing. Um, so we're going to, we're going to live stream that, I think. Cool. Be careful. I might join you in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please come along. You can, you can be a dastardly villain. Oh, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we need some we need some evil protagonists, I think. <laughs> oh, trust me, I can be evil if you want. <laughs> well, James, it sounds like uh, you could do with some sleep, mate. Uh, I probably even though should it's, sleep. Yeah, it's not you know, so you easy. You probably should, but you're probably just sitting there feeding through all of the comments and everybody engaging with it until the last breath of it. So. Fantastic yeah, yeah. work on it. You have created a beautiful world. Uh, I think that's us for this bit of an interview. Guys, if you have not checked out the Drowned Earth Kickstarter just yet, this is going to be your last chance to jump into something that I believe is going to be a fantastic world and a really, really great game system. So, uh, myself and James will head on here. Make sure and check it out. We'll see you again soon. Fame and fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Interesting stuff there, Justin. I thought it was really cool that they've designed a character around what their community have been voting for. Yeah. It's a really, really nice touch, really nice way to get everybody involved. And I'm really excited to see what they're doing this weekend with that live sculpting piece. It's going to be yeah. really, really cool. Sweet. Well, four days left to go. Mm. Um, sticking with Kickstarter? Sticking with Kickstarter, this is, uh, this is our last one. Uh, remember, we're going to talk about the, 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 load, the reload competition just, mm. the, just at the end of the show. So if you've stuck around, we haven't forgot. Okay. Yeah. Um, alone by Horrible Games. This is mm. called an asymmetrical sci fi dungeon crawler. And I am absolutely dying to find out what the hell that is. Ben! <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so normally asymmetrical means that, in the terms of dungeon calling anyway, it would be many heroes versus one villain, like an overlord or a dungeon master or something. Right. In this case, what they've done with Alone, Horrible Games, is that they've switched on its head, and instead it's one hero versus three evil masterminds. Oh, And the idea ah. of you... As, yeah, you play the hero who's like a, a space marine or an engineer or well, like uh, we one of a, a number of different classes trying to escape from this underground sort of sci-fi labyrinth. And you're going to be going up against not one character, not one person, but three other people who are going to be trying to foil your plans, kill you with monsters, spring traps on you and all kinds of different things like that. And the thing that's really interesting about this game as well is that it's always the hero's turn. They will always have a certain amount of action points that they can spend on a given turn. And this can be used to sort of move around, to explore tiles, maybe run, search, attack things or whatever. And it's on the onus of the sort of evil masterminds to interrupt his turn as things are happening, to maybe, as I say, spring traps on him or spawn monsters or potentially reveal certain things in the future mm -hmm. and try and guide him down false paths and stuff like that. The other really cool thing about this game is that it's done in sort of like a, a, a sort of a shroud of darkness. So they've really tried to make it feel oppressive. And so what you'll have is that you can only see as far as your flashlight in the game will show you, so maybe one or two tiles. Yeah. And as you move throughout this facility, you'll start to lose tiles behind you mm -hmm. and maybe more will be revealed in front of you. So you'll never quite know what's out there in the darkness. Uh -huh. So it's this really tense and interesting sort of experience where you're trying to survive against, you know, basically all odds to try and get out of this place yeah and it actually looks fantastic so yeah i really like the idea of it always being your turn mm. right so ben's playing and it's up to the three of us to interrupt him to yes. make yeah. shit happen that makes his day go really bad mm. i really like I that this, this sounds like this sounds awesome i think this game is made for me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just for me to be sitting there going, doo, 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 I'm it's walking like, down the corridor. Justin, wait a second. Oh, God, what? Why? It's like Justin <laughs> will throw you in. You're the maze runner and has to get out. Yeah. Do you know, I, I don't know. I can't get it out of my head. But the only thing I can think of is we get Ben at, the, at one end of the table and the three of us at the other end of the table. And the only thing that would make it cooler is if we were inside a pane of glass looking out at him. <laughs> Normally as a dungeon master, yeah. right? Uh, as playing the, the overlord. Mm. You normally have a ton of things at your disposal, right? Like you're spawning the monsters mm -hmm. and stuff like that there. It'll be interesting to see just how much power um, one of these space marines or, or whatever actually uh, the, has. The actual yeah. person in the maze. Because mm -hmm. so, in, in order for this to work, it'd need to, be, it'd need to be actually a really powerful character. Yeah, because a real if badass. It, because if he's got three against him. Mm -hmm. In which case, it probably will fail... Um, really epic and really sci really movie like, you know. It's um... yeah. The the idea is that they've tried to kind of theme this off. Um, to, I don't know whether or not you guys have heard of it, but the game Dead Space, where you've got I was that yes. character. Mm. Uh -huh. So yeah. yeah, you've got like the Isaac Clarke style character mm. against all odds, trying to survive against the darkness, and that's... it's all about mm. not necessarily just killing things because that's not always going to be your option you've got other things you've got to do so maybe you'll try and find your way uh, you'll try and find maps and you'll try and find your way to like the engineering area mm. and then you'll turn the lights on in certain areas of the uh, of the of the sort of underground complex which will mean that the monsters will be less inclined to go through the light towards to try and get you in things mm. so it's all about trying to use your wits and guile as well as just sort of like the big brawn yeah. and guns i was thinking that's also Sorry, that's also where the, the classes come in as well. So you've actually got like different styles of, uh, of sort of lone heroes. So you've got engineers, marines, mm. uh, you know, rangers and all kinds of different yeah. things as well. I was oh, thinking um... that when you were describing it, this would have the feel of a first person shooter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because in a first person shooter, you generally yeah, play yeah, as yourself, world. as the epic character yeah. who just mows the minions down yeah. on his path. I was kind of getting glory. the Doom vibe off this. Yeah. 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 And when you said Dead Space, because when I was looking at the Marine guys, I was like, oh, it's a bit Dead Spacey looking. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Although, here, I'll tell you this, Warren, you like your 2.5D. Yeah, check this out. Have a look at this. This is, this is a pledge called the Cultist Pledge, where you get uh, actual 3D resin uh, terrain tiles. Yes. Now, that, that'll, be, that'll be kind of interesting. Yeah. Won't it? That's uh, another cool thing of actually talking about tiles. Um, the game actually has a modular nature to it as well. So there's no one layout for this uh, facility. So every time you come back to it, obviously it's going to be shrouded in darkness, so you won't really know what's around the corner. But it could be something completely different from the last time you went through as well. So it's pretty cool because yeah. that sort of really adds to the sort of replay value of this game, which is good. Mm. So. Can you go backwards? 
because if people are lifting tiles behind you, can you can you backtrack or does the maze... yeah yeah you can go back. I mean, the the like maze that. might regrow in a different way, possibly. Yeah. Well, yeah. they they have uh, the overlords have like a sort of map on the back of their ah. sort of dungeon screen. Oh, so they they, they know where it's going. Out, so, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's not just a random mm. generated map the whole no. time. Okay. Well, it's sort of randomly, randomly generated, and then they've got it plotted out on the back of their screen so they yeah. can work out what's going on. So. Okay. Twelve days left on that, so a little bit of time for you to to go and have a look at it and, mm. and see if it's for you. But I kind of like the turning the dungeon crawler on its head because I think it'll make the hero feel more even, heroic. even more heroic. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. um, it, it's it's one of those ones you got to play it to to to, to really mm. see. But I do quite like the idea of us banding together just to be cruel. <laughs> oh. I think I think I, I think it could be fun in that. <laughs> right, Justin. Yes. Prize. Prize. Yeah, just let me let me call up the list here. So okay. the prize this week is the deluxe load pledge mm -hmm. for the reload Kickstarter. Yeah. What you're getting in that. The load base game, the loading expansion, the please wait expansion, the load Kickstarter exclusive expansion, and all the free stretch goals. Man, that's a load of stuff. Oh my god, that is a load oh, of stuff. Oh, you did that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you. Shame. Right. Um, and to be in with the chance of winning this deluxe load pledge? Comments on YouTube, Beasts of War, or Facebook. Okay. For the post for the weekend or this week. It's the usual then. Get your comments below and uh, you could you could win a bucket load of yep. minis. And stay tuned for tomorrow's XLBS where we have a fantastic prize coming from the guys. Who blood, and blood and plunder. Yeah, yeah blood and plunder. You got to, you got to yeah. join us for that. Um, uh, please do consider coming over to beastofwar.com and uh, joining our band of backstagers as we uh, will be meeting up tomorrow morning to have another flick through the world of gaming to to see what's what's happening. Perfect. We're That's done. A wrap. We'll see you tomorrow. See you then. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on